Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Deliverance Thursday. So I want you to like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. Today is going to be a phenomenal day. The Deliverance team is here. Overseer Ronnie King, Apostle Shirley Brown, and Bishop Bloomer are joining us today. So I hope that you guys are ready. This week, oh my goodness, this week on Warfare Ecology has been so powerful. The Holy Spirit has taken over each and every single day. It has just been amazing. Monday with Relationship Monday with Dr. Seymour and Apostle Baxter and Apostle Evans. Yes, Eschatology Tuesday with Dr. Williams. And then yesterday we had a day with the bishop. Listen, so if you missed any of the episodes this week, I encourage you to go back and check it out on Facebook at Bishop G. Bloomer or YouTube at the General of Warfare. You do not want to miss what has been shared this week. It has been some powerful statements and things that we need to make sure that we keep in our arsenal to equip ourselves and stay strong. Okay, so go ahead and get those questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And we'll do our best to get those questions answered for you live on the air today. So good afternoon, Cynthia. How are you? Hey, I am doing fine. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's, it's Thursday. All right. <laughs> We're on the home stretch. We got the countdown going. <laughs> That's a good thing. Absolutely. Yes, most definitely. All right. Thank you, Cynthia. You're welcome. All right, you guys. So get your questions ready. Today is going to be a great day. Now, I encourage you that if you have questions for the deliverance team that is of a private manner, Put those questions in an email. We won't share your name or anything like that, but you can get the answers that you need to get your deliverance. So email us at media at bishopbloomer.com and we'll do our best to get that answer for you live on the air today. And I do encourage you to make sure that when you ask your questions that you be as specific and as clear as you possibly can. And don't assume that we know what he is or who he is. Be specific, spell it out so we can get you the answers and get to as many questions as we possibly can. Thank you. So put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. So listen, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes, that's what that's where we are with this. So I hope that you guys are taking the time out to educate yourself and just to think about the things that you that you can do for yourself to put yourself in a better mental place. You know, we need to be concerned about our mental health because the things and the things, the day-to-day -day things that we deal with in our life can affect that drastically. So we just want to share a little bit of a awareness on that and release the stigma that is attached to it. So also from the standpoint that as an entrepreneur, we need to make sure that we are in a good mind space and we have to make sure that we take care of ourselves. That's what it comes down to. So this week we are sharing some, um, some, some tips that can help you to kind of make sure you maintain and manage your, uh, your mental health. That's what it comes down to. So we got five, yes, five mental health tips for entrepreneurs. Now, even though it's labeled for entrepreneurs, just know that as an individual, these are some things that you might be able to take into consideration for yourself that can actually help you to deal with the stress of trying to run a business. Because running a business, starting a business, and just trying to maintain all those things can, can really, really be stressful. Very, very stressful. And every one process is stress different. But we just got to learn how to take care of ourselves and not be afraid to ask for help. And so our five tips for today are, number one, take care of your finances. And that is one of those things that is just a foundational principle across the board uh, as a business owner. We need to make sure that we do everything that we can to keep our personal finances in order and our business finances in order as well too. Because that helps to alleviate some of that stress because it's a lot because if, as long as you got your money in order, you know what's coming in, you know what's not there and you know how you got to deal with it. It can help you to balance and don't be afraid to delegate, especially if you have employees, or if you have contractors who do different things for you. 
Don't be afraid to allow them to do what you hired them to do that can free you up to do the things that you need to do, like run your business. And it will help you to get a better understanding and just be able to relax a little bit and be creative and grow your business. Surround yourself with like-minded people. It's good to be around other entrepreneurs because you end up sharing a lot of uh, tidbits and little uh, nuggets that you need to know that can help you to move forward. And also some things that can end up eliminating the process of some uh, stresses that you may have just from that, but also from the standpoint of having like-minded people and not necessarily, um, you know, to have someone that can help you to think positive and not always have to hear about that negative thing or things that you can't do and whatnot, because it's good to have somebody to be able to speak positive things into you and to be able to be, to be able to actually express yourself to as well too, when there is an issue. And learn to leverage secondary markets. You know, there's certain things that, you know, we go into business and we're looking to target a certain market and stuff like that. But keep in mind, there may be aspects of your business that other markets can utilize. So don't be afraid to expand yourself that way. And that can help you to grow your streams of income and also to grow your business as well. And last but not least, and it is the most important, do not be afraid to see a therapist. There is nothing wrong with seeing a therapist and there is nothing wrong with asking for help. It's just about being honest with yourself because you know what you need. That's all it is, okay? So I want you to know that you are not alone. So if you find yourself in the in a in a mental health crisis, you can always call the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And that helpline is 1-800-950-8264, Monday through Friday from 10 to 8 p.m. Or if you're in a crisis, you can text NAMI to N-A-M-I to 741-741 because you are not alone. There are professionals out there that can help you to get the help that you need. Sometimes we just got to be honest with ourselves and we know where we are. So I encourage you to make sure you look out for yourself. Check on the strong people. Check on the strong people who are always checking on other people because sometimes strong people need help too. Okay, so I hope that you guys are ready. Go ahead and get those questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. It's today is going to be a phenomenal day. So go ahead and send us your testimony. Tell us how the Lord has been moving on your behalf, because we all know he is up to something. Email us at media at bishopbloomer.com, and we will do our best to No, We're going to share your story, okay? So we're not going to tell your name unless you say it's okay, but we just want to hear from you. Give us that praise report and tell us how the Lord is moving because we are overcomers and we do overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And even when you give the your testimony, send it in, in an email does count. OK, so email us at media at bishop All right. And so our food giveaway is coming up on May the um, 18th. So we will be at Bethel Family Worship Center at 11 a.m. at 515 Dow Street in Durham, North Carolina. So if you are in need or you know someone who's in need, please share the information. We work diligently every Every day working on the things that we need to make sure that this food giveaway is a success. So we thank you for all the seeds that you continue to sow into this ministry because it is allowing us to be a blessing to the community, not just stateside, but also abroad. So thank you for standing strong with us. And have you got your copy of Sowed? Yes, The Secrets of Deliverance, the Bishop's Book. Um, which is the Bishop's Notes. That's the latest book that has come out. It is available in ebook, which you can, if you buy it today, you can download it today, or you can also get a physical copy as well too. And we do have a few more of those left. So I encourage you to visit www.bishopbloomer.com and click on that shop button and go and get your copy of Sewed. Now, the good thing about this, this book is that number one, it's 21 Lessons. 21 lessons and the way the notes are written are the way that the bishop sees the notes. Yes. So all those notes, 
That's how he sees it. And you'll get the air date to when it was that he preached the message. And then you'll have the opportunity to see how the Lord moves through the bishop to release the messages that he releases to us. So you do not want to miss it. It's kind of some insider information. So go ahead and get your copy today. Visit uh, www.bishopbloomer.com and click on shop and you'll be able to obtain that. So I hope that you guys are ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. All right, Cynthia, let's talk a little bit. Yes. We would you like to talk about? <laughs> so what you got me by surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got you know how to, you know, we was waiting on Overseer King, but we're gonna see. But um so what was the highlight yesterday for you? Oh, man. Um, that, I don't know, that the whole thing, um, you know, Bishop brought up, um, you know, the, um, the offering up to, of offering up to the Lord and what was the difference? You know, why did the Lord uh, respect um not um, Abel's offering and not Cain. Right. And, you know, that was, that was one thing that I always looked at all the time and, you know, wondered about, but when Bishop broke it down and, and, you know, he says, now look at the scripture again, you know, and read it. And um, I, I never really paid attention to the fact that it says after some time had gone by, that's when Cain offered up his offering. Mm -hmm. and and Abel was his first first fruit offering and you know just the way it was worded and I was like you know I never saw that before (laughs) and that was an eye-opener you know and it really had me thinking and you know he was saying you know it's, it's you know one thing um several things that you you cannot say about that's as you can't say about God he cannot be second right that was good right there. You know, and it's one of those things is like, yeah, we know that, but do we always do it? So it was, it was really good. This week in itself has just been a powerful, powerful week for me, you know, just across the board, just in talking about the, the importance of sowing seed and things of that nature, but also just, to, just in making those daily affirmations of the I am. Yes. You know, that's, that's been something that, you know, it's like, you, you got to speak over yourself, you know? So I was like, shoot, I got a couple of them this morning, but see, it's like a lot of those things that it's like, you, you know, you can say I am healed and because of, you know, by his stripes, we are healed, you know? And it's like, it's what's written in the word. So we have no choice, but to say I am, because that's what it says that I am. And it's like, it's just so much. It was just, just amazing to me, you know, because at the end of the day, I am because he says that I can, that's what I am. I'm successful because he says that I am. And that's just what it comes down to. So absolutely. I, I really appreciate it this week from that perspective and whatnot. Well, let's I, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm saying, and I am a child of God. And because I am a child of God, I can stand all on all those promises in his word. And you can literally just take the word of God and speak it and apply it to mm-hmm. yourself. And, 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 and like you said, you know, we need to speak it because sometimes we just think it, but we need to actually speak, speak it and believe it so that it connects from our mind mm-hmm. to our heart, to our actions. Absolutely. All right. So good afternoon, Overseer King. How are you? Yeah, how you doing? I'm good. Great, great. Happy Thursday. Yes, happy Thursday. Call it, call it happy day before Friday, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. This year has gone by fast. Can you believe that we're in May? Yes, we are in May. I mean, is I mean life. It, I mean, as it don't stop. It just keep rolling and it keep. It, but I thank God we're here. Like the song says, I'm still here, and it's by the grace of God. Yes. And I'm still okay. here. We have, I tell you, we, we put a many in the ground, but we're still here. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I, we, we was talking this morning. You know, I think, uh, you know, 
I don't know if this is this is uh, uh, theor theor what theologically correct, but I don't know. Can you give God a reason to keep you alive? Why don't we ask the apostle that? I mean, you know, some you know, some people that you know, like maybe purpose or something like that. Is it some people because of their purpose, God let allows them to stay here to finish their purpose, and some people you, they, they're not able to. I'm, you know, it's a question. I'm sure everybody, you know, what, what can we do to prolong our days? Apostle Brown. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. I think that we prolong our days by being obedient to the word of God. What mm -hmm. he's already said. I mean, look, he created us. So he put us here for a purpose. So mm -hmm. all we have to do is just be obedient to what he said. And our days are prolonged. Okay. So so actually what you're saying is it's because of your purpose and your assignment. God allows you to finish your assignment. And yeah, now, he, so, cre he created you to do something. So if hmm. he created you to do something, why would he want to take you unless you just be absolutely disobedient and just say, I'm going to do what I want to do. And so then, that, you know, wow. you may suffer a while before... Mm -hmm. Your days are up, but, you know, he allows us to say, I was looking, I think the bishop uh, in Kojic, I think he's 102 today. Mm -hmm. I saw that, I think. I'm like, you know, God has allowed that for a reason. So mm -hmm. if he puts us here, he creates us for purpose, then be obedient, be willing, and do your purpose. Wow. So what you're saying is you, you in purpose, you're obedient, and death really can't overtake you because you are in you're in a safe place. Now let's say let's talk about the people that are just living. Um, you know, I hear the phrase of people say a lot, I'm living my best life. And you know, I, and I say that too, in all in, in all regards, I'm living but my life is in Christ. So tell you understand it's not most people when they say that, most people that most people that say that they have left the church. And they, you know, they they on a they on a trip somewhere. They enjoying themselves. They say, "I'm living my best life now." And I'm saying, "How much of that is your best life?" You understand? And I, and the Bible says, "For we are dead, and our life is hid with Christ and God." And so now to say that, I understand what you're saying. You know, you you make it time for yourself. But uh, I, like I like I said, I think we need to really find out what God's will is for our life. Overseer. Uh huh. You know, what came, who came to my mind was um, Hezekiah mm -hmm. and he was sick and he was going to die. Mm -hmm. And he, he prayed to the Lord and he asked the Lord, he says, remember how I have walked with you in truth mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with a whole heart and I, I have done good in your eyes. So he, he pleaded to the Lord based on how he had lived his life. Mm -hmm. you know, when he, when he was facing death. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's something to think about. Right, right, right. And so I think we all, as we get older, we think about our, you know, understand, we just, they're just thoughts that cross our minds. You know, sometimes I think about, how, 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 how would I die? You know, what would be my end and stuff like that? You know, just thoughts that come. Um, do you ever think like that, Cynthia? Yeah, <laughs> I do, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I go to the doctor and he told me certain numbers, I'm like, oh, yeah, I better get this together <laughs> because I don't want that to happen or, you know, I don't want X, Y, Z to happen. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, I want to live a, a nice long life, but I, I want to be in good health to be able to, exactly. to enjoy my life and not just be existing. Exactly. That's the key. That is the key. And I think a lot of that also is how you how you handle yourself when you're young. Because, you know, a lot of times we are, when we we have a young body and we, we as we get old, we have an old body. But the, the way the way that life goes, the way you treat your young body, the way your body is going to treat you when you get old. You know, some people when they're young, they neglect the body and be up all night, every night, drinking, party and having a win. They're just 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 living it up to you like 35. Then your body just say, I'm tired. And, it just, you know, and things start happening, your kidneys start failing, your, you know, just a lot of things. But, you know, that's what the scripture says. And I think Ecclesiastes 12, remember now the creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, while you say I have no pleasure in them. 
And so I think, you know, we should consider things when we, as we, you know, the seeds that we plant, not only financial seeds, but seeds in our life and, and the decision that we make are seeds also, the, how, you know, how we do when we're young. You, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So true. So true. We, we plant, sometimes we plant bad seeds when we're young. And it, sometimes it takes 40 years for those seeds. Because I, I asked some people in my family, they, they drank all their life, drank. I mean, they, they say they have a good time, they drank all their life. But then when they're 50 and 60, they got cirrhosis of the liver. You understand? And, and, and so that's, that, that's, that's, that it came a reaping time. You know, there's a day of reaping. And, uh, and, uh, and I pray that that's good for everybody. But, you know, like I said, it's all, it's all about the seeds that we sow. And that's why we talk on warfare ecology. Let's sow good seeds. Let's sow financial seeds. And we want financial blessings. And I think that's a great way to, uh, to talk, you know, because we, none of us are here forever. We're not here forever. I don't care how good you are, how whatever, you, how, you know, you, we're not here. We're gonna, there's going to be a the days of our years, the Bible says a three score year and 10. If I read no strength, they're four score. And uh, so I think that we just need to obey God and live life to the fullest and just remember that Christ is our life. And once we stay in Christ, there's a safety. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows. So I think, uh, you know, it's, life, has its up, up, uh, life has its ups and downs, but I think that we need to just stay focused on God and not forget God, even in our... <clears throat> In our good times, our bad times, we just need to remember God. There's a song that uh, Carlton Pierce wrote years ago, always remember Jesus, always remember, always keep him on your mind. You understand? That's and good. I think and then when you get the right thoughts and the right confessions, it, it brings healing to your body. Even if, even if sickness do come, even if cancer do come, even if the, the tuberculosis do come, even if whatever do come, We've got a, we got promises from God. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. And I forget not his benefits. And it names his benefits, who heals all my diseases and, and uh, who crowns me with love and kindness. So God is a God that heals our disease. Even as we get older, he heals. He, 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 God is still a healer. And we have to really confess that and know that he is a healer. And I'm taking over the show again. It's, they're going to, they're gonna, you know, they're going to, they're going to. They're gonna take. They're gonna take me off the show. No, we're not. Mm -mm. <laughs> but you understand. But you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> it's the seeds that we sow. And I talk to young people. It's just, there's not a day go by. Not a day go by. That I have conversation. I said, "What are you doing?" I mean, even even just listen to them with the loud music. Okay, ain't nobody in the car but you. Okay, the car is so loud until it's actually vibrating. And you can hear him a mile down the road. I said, um, you're young now. I said, how's your hearing going to be when you get uh, 60 years old? They said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's already gone. And it ain't but 20. I mean, it's the seeds that we sow and our bodies are not to be neglected. Our bodies are gifts that God give us. And as we should cherish it, um, you know, like a new car, you know, people will wash their car, they'll take care of their car, make sure the car pops, you better not hit that car. But we, we treat our bodies just like crap, you know, we just, we just, 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 just abuse it. And we expect to get a life supply of, of, of life from this body after you done beat it up, after you done abuse it, you done, I mean... <clears throat> And we let other people abuse us, but we want it to give us a lifetime of gratitude, a lifetime of service. And a lot of times we fall short. So uh, how did I get off? How did I start talking about that? I, I started talking about something. But, <laughs> but, but am I telling the truth? We got to plant the right kind of seeds in ourselves, in our life, and in, 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 in with God. Put God first. And live. I would tell people, live your best life, but don't live it apart from God. You know, you understand, when, you know, when people leave a church, they say, well, I'm living my best life now. In other words, so the church was hindering you from living your best life or, or, or was it your mindset? OK, apostle, say, say some apostle. I mean, I, uh, I was just listening and listening. Um, you're doing good. You know, you say we live in our best life. Yeah. Determine what is your best life. Mm hmm. That's the thing, determine. It. Uh, I mean, if you was once doing things and was destructive, now you're not doing it, maybe that is your best life. But right. what helped you to get to that point? 
So right. often we make comments, but what helps us to get to that point? What yes, what is what is structured in our life that has taken us from the bad point to the good point? Or is hmm. it just because we can't do it anymore? Are we too old to do it? But you know, a good life should always be what we want from the time we can recognize what life is. Mm -hmm. Wow! Like the man in the wheelchair testified said he don't. You know, he he. Uh, what's that testimony say? Uh, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. The place I used to go, I don't go no more. Well, you're in a wheelchair. You can't go to those places no more. So you you say you say by 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 default. <laughs> but, but, but you know what now? Now, but at the same time, overseas. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> you cannot place limitations on somebody just because they have di a disability. Absolutely right. not. You yeah. cannot do that because. Yeah. Just because you, because I knew someone who was in a wheelchair, <laughs> that man lived by himself, he drove a car and everything. So if mm -hmm. you are determined to do something, there is nothing that is going to stop you from doing it. Wow. That's what I wow. said when I say you've got to determine what is a good life. Mm. For a good life for me, it might be getting up every morning, being able to do what I want to do. For somebody else, it might be, I just woke up. Yeah. You know, you you what the good life is, is what you really make it and how you accept it. Because yeah. look at Paul. Paul had something wrong with him, but he mm -hmm. lived a good life too. Mm -hmm. Because he determined it was a good life. Wow. So what you're saying is what well, if people can do whatever it is they put their mind to do, if they want to do it, it's going they're gonna make it happen. Is that what you're saying? If they determine that's what they want to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. They so can make it happen. So if, but don't if get, we're in Christ and it lines up according to the word and we believe the word, we take action on the word, then it will happen. Mm -hmm. But we still got a process to go through. Mm. So if it don't get done, in essence, you're saying they didn't want to do it. That wasn't their choice. Mm. Okay. I'm glad they got me delivered because there's some people on waiting to call me. They said I didn't have a chance to call you. So you know what I'm saying? I said you didn't want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you said, people can find a way to do whatever they want to do. And so that 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 we have the power. We're talking about words and stuff like that. And, and that, that's powerful. God and has we made just have it. to understand there's an order in which everything is done. There's mm -hmm. an order. And if you do it in the correct order, it will come to pass. I didn't say you weren't going to have trials. I didn't say you weren't going to have tests. All of that is in your making. But there's an order things are supposed to be done. And as we do those things in order, then it brings us to that good life. It really does. Wow. So the order, the order of things is first, let's say, let's talk about order. Put first thing, put God first. Remember, we always talk about God, God first. He's always first. Okay, he ain't going to okay. take second. He always first. Okay. Wow. God first. Okay. We're talking about order. Now, who, who is second? Well, if we put him in order, if we put God first, what's second? We if you be... have a family, your family is next. Okay, now, now let me ask you this. Where do we come in? You look good. We could put God first, the family down. Where, where do yourself come in at? Which, would that be before the family or after the family? Well, you understand that you have an order. So in that perspective, if you acknowledge in God, you also bringing yourself into order because you have to acknowledge him. Then you mm -hmm. come along. You also bringing yourself into order when you're doing what you're doing with your family. So mm -hmm. you automatically come into order when you follow what he wants. Mm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. What, what do they say on the airplane? Put the mask on yourself first before you put it on your child, right? Because if you fall out. Right. When you bring right. in everything into order, you mm -hmm. yourself, you automatically will be in order. Wow. So, wow. Wow. So a lot of us are out of order. We put, we put our we put ourselves first, family, and God is maybe fifth or sixth down on the list. We go we maybe on Easter we'll go visit God at church on Easter, Mother's Day, stuff like that. And uh, you know, and, and, and God is not going to accept that. You know, he, he, he he's always we, first. 
Always. He's always first. And what if I decide not to put him first? Well, if you don't know him, then you don't know where he stands in your life. The thing is, let's get to know him first. So then you, once you are introduced to him mm -hmm. and understand what he is in your life, then he's going to be first. You understand that you don't have no function without him. Mm, 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 mm. But you, you got to get introduced to him first. See, yeah. we, we in church are trying to tell you who God is instead of introducing you who he, to who he is. Mm, 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 mm. God first. Wow. And it, wow. And it, even the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Added. Things. But what we, things. Will be added. This is a promise from God. I mean, you know, it's just this there. So that's amazing. That, that That's amazing scripture. It's going to be added. It, it, wow. I'm uh, seeking God first in these ads. So we seeking the things and that means we're out of order. Yeah. Is that, is that yeah. The things mm. are rust. The things are dry up. The things, the things will go away. People will go away, all of that. But he mm -hmm. is always the same. Always. Always mm -hmm. has been. Always will be. So let me seek him first. If I seek him first, I get to know who he is. Then when I'm in a dilemma, I might shake a little bit. Mm -hmm. I might shift a little bit, but I will not fall down because I know who's my provider. I know mm -hmm. who's my comforter. I know who's my healer. I know who's my restorer. I know who's my counselor. I know mm -hmm. him. Wow. So you've got to be first. And uh, we were talking about being the youth. Just imagine a person that seeks God in their youth. I, I got saved when I was 16. And um, I, I, that's one of the first scriptures that I learned when I got saved. We seek you first, kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. And I noticed the, 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 the trail of my life has been whenever I needed a cer certain thing to happen at a certain point in my life, it was no effort whatsoever. God, it was just there. You understand? It was, it was just there. It was just there. Something where, where you didn't pray for. You know, sometimes God gives you things that you don't even pray for because he, he's just that kind of God. He knows things, you know, that, that we don't know we need. And then, like I said, you, you, the Bible said in, in Ecclesiastes 12, and I said it earlier, remember now the creator in the days of our youth while the evil days come not. And so a lot of times we wait till we get old to, to seek what God and, and, and nonetheless, as long as you get him, I mean, as long as you get him, but. As well, long as he lets you stay here to seek him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but imagine the advantage of the person that seeks God early. And to understand, and then to, to, to wait to, you know, when you get 90. So people, this is what you people, I used to hear people say when I got, when I was young, say, I'm going to get saved when I get old. I'm going to enjoy my life now. And, you know, and, and so they, what they do while they're young, got their strength, they, they, they doing it. Then when they get old, they still don't have, because it's not in your, it's in this whole, you're not, you can't come to Christ except the spirit. But, on you. but they don't, they don't understand saying that they don't understand, first of all, their life is not theirs. So mm -hmm. if they take their life and put it upon their hands, then they are enjoying their life. But when you mm -hmm. get to understand that my life is not mine, see, I understood my life wasn't mine when I got two diagnoses of cancer because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, God, you got that because you promised me this, so I can't go mm -hmm. nowhere. Now, mm -hmm. y'all get together over here. Don't start screaming and hollering and stuff. Let's just stand on what God's already, he's already said it. So I have to walk out of this. Mm-hmm. And so when we go around and saying, you know, that it's, you know, when I get a certain age, it's because you in control of your life. God is not in control of your life. Mm -hmm. So if you're in control, anything can happen at any time because you got to say, OK, since you want since you want to have it, uh, Adam, I'm, I'm going to stand back and let you take let you take control. And then you will we'll, we'll run our life amok. And now when we run our life amok, we call on God. God said, well, look, if you'd have called me before, you would you would have <laughs> 
deal with all this. I would have led you. And then some, God. and you know, too, overseer, sometimes God, you you be doing all that running, and all of a sudden God will snatch you up out of a car before an accident and you got your whole life turned around. It's because mm-hmm. God said, I can't let you keep running like this. I got something for you to do. So let me give you a supernatural experience with me and jerk you right up out the car. Car hanging out the ceiling somewhere, hanging out off a telegram pole and you standing there looking at, he said, I got need of you. I got something I got for you to do. So God is sovereign and he's just so kind and he, he tolerates and works with us. And that's what we need to understand. But he's got to be first. He should be always. He's always first. <laughs> He's always first. You know, he said, I, I said, I am a jealous God. And he said, and uh, there's none God beside me. And he said, uh, none before me. And I mean, yeah, beside me, there's none, there's none equal to me. You know, there's none equal to me. And so that's why he always got picked off with the children of Israel, because after I've done all this for you, and now you go to whoring out the other gods. Now I got, I, I got, I got, I got to get you. <laughs> I got to get you. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's an amazing thing. Um, lesson on tomorrow deals with uh, uh, a few of the things that God cannot do. Mm-hmm. There's some things that God cannot do. People say, hey, God can do everything. No, he can't. there's some things he cannot do. And at the top of that list is that God can't be second. Mm. And y'all was just talking about that just now. God cannot be second can't be it's impossible for god to be second and the reason why a lot of people are in trouble with god is because of the positioning that they place god in you know i say this quickly i said it yesterday on our show um cain and abel's uh, uh offerings are offered up to god and cain is in trouble a lot of people say because, you know, his heart wasn't right and da-da-da-da. Cain was in trouble because Genesis chapter number uh, 4, verses 3 through 5, says in the process of time, uh, Cain then brought an offering unto God from the ground. And then it says, and the same also Abel brought an offering to the Lord of his firstlings, the first that came through the matrix and God had respect for his sacrifice and offering and respect for him and blessed him, but had not respect for Cain's offering, nor did he respect Cain. And the principle there is that Abel offered up the first of the first of the yield. Exodus says that all that opens up the matrix, the first of the first that offers up the matrix, the matrix is the womb, be it man or beast, it belongs to the Lord, belongs to the Lord. And that's where Cain's situation for people said, well, Cain was evil and he cursed God, had nothing to do with being evil at that moment, had nothing to do with cursing, it had to do with placement, God first. And if you don't put God first, then God goes after the thing that you put first, period, period. God cannot be second. You don't want to miss that lesson on tomorrow. It's going to be a powerful, powerful, um, powerful, powerful, powerful lesson. This is day number five in uh, May It Be Unto You. And uh, what shall we say to these things if God be for us? Uh, uh, who can be against us? A whole lot of people. They will. They 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 will try to only find out that God would not allow a number of things to happen or to transpire in our life because He made a covenant with us. There's a scripture that says, "Even when we're not faithful, God remains faithful, for He will not deny Himself." himself. God cannot be second. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, first and last. God cannot be second. No matter what you do, how you try it, he cannot be. You shall have no other gods in front of me or before me. He can't be second. 
It's a powerful lesson y'all was teaching just a few minutes ago. Just absolutely powerful. In our lesson today, we're going to talk about the spirit of Jezebel one more time. And I hope that you are, are ready for it. There will be physical manifestations of exorcism going on with you as we take on this particular topic today. Yesterday, if you watched the program yesterday, you will, or if you go back and you watch it, you will experience a deliverance in the area of finances on how the enemy has has attacked you um and today you will be set free from some subtle sanctimonious demonic bondages that crept into your life your business your marriage your church through the pandemic <sighs> It happened through the pandemic and for whatever reason, it's still going on and we're gonna tackle it today in order to stop this demonic uh, intervention from existing. Uh, you know the ways to, 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 to sow and you know how to open up the heavens, those of you that are joining us today those of you that are watching, those of you that are with us today, you know what it is. I'm going to ask that um, three, 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 and one would uh, just obey God in this area. Three to sow a seed of 90, three to sow a seed of 27, and three to sow a seed of 21, and one to sow the seed of 128. If you're logging on with us today for the very, very first time, we open up the heavens um, with uh, uh, John baptizing Jesus. Uh, we open up the heavens with uh, a Judah praise, a palm at the throat of your enemy. We open up the heavens with an angel in transit. Those three posture, postures of scripture. The first one is before you. The second one is coming to you right now, second scripture. And the third scripture. And when you take all three of those numbers and you put them together, you come up with 138. 10 of you are sowing 90, 10 is sowing 27, 10 is sowing 21, and three is sowing 138. I'm gonna ask for three of you to do it right now. Three of you to sow the 90, three of you to sow the 21, and three of you to sow the 20, 27. And I gotta move with this decisively and very, very quick because of what the Lord is about to do today in this lesson. I don't wanna hinder or hold it up. So Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that your people as they're logging on, oh, uh, 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 evangelism, uh, uh, virtual evangelism, each of you, are to reach out to three of the persons and tell them to join in on the program today. Now, I, I, I tell you that because the enemy knows what we're going to be teaching on today, he's going to be working, he's going to be trying all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff the enemy is going to be trying today because he doesn't want this information to get to you. Pastors need to be on today talking to you. Leaders need to be on today talking to you. Get ready in the next few minutes. We're going to be, we're going to be teaching. Uh, so uh, three is sowing 21, three is sowing 27, and three is sowing 90. Three is sowing 21, three is sowing 27, three is sowing 90. I found out the other day that one of the hardest seeds to sow one of the hardest seeds to sow is the $90 seed. I don't know why. I guess it's because it's the process, the elimination blessing. And, um, you know, it's a heavenly proclamation of your earthly stand. But people are having it hard to sow the $90 seed. 
and they'll go ahead and sell to 320, uh, 575, 1000, 150, 100, but 90 for whatever reason. And that's why I got to stop for a few moments and pray and break this thing here. Got to pray and break it. The $90 seed was the Ark of the Covenant seed. It's a covenant seed. And I think that's where the enemy fights at. I mean, 21s will come in, 27s will come in. You ask for 138, that'll come in. You, you ask for 259, that'll come in. The 90 stays right there. People find it hard to release it and sow it. And that's where a demonic attack is at. And it's there that I want to talk to you right now. Those of you who's been needing God to move on your behalf, needing him to move something that's been in the way for a long time, your breakthrough is in the obedience of releasing this seed of 90. 90 is the number of days that the Ark of the Covenant is at Obadiah's house. Man, it been at Abinadad's house for 20 years and nothing happened. That's what's happening now in your life. But got to Obadiah's house and grass started growing in the desert. Water started shooting up out of rocks. Trees started growing that had been planted and laying dormant for years because covenant has gotten there. And I'm challenging three persons right now. There's 10 of you that got to do it, but three persons right now, just to drop and stop what you're doing and say, I just heard you, Bishop. And I'm sowing that 90 to open up the heavens today over my life, over my womb, over my seed, over my children, over whatever, put your request there in the name of Jesus. Before we go to the apostle and the overseer, the three of you break forth right now with the seed of 90 and loose this anointing in the name of Jesus. Just loose it right now. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I'm waiting for three persons to sow the seed of 90. Three persons to sow the seed of 90. Your business started off, it was doing okay, and then a drag came. Something fell off of it. I curse that right now. And I release this process of elimination blessing on you and on it right now in the name of Jesus. Watch this here. Here it comes. As you obey God. The first person, then the second person, then the third person. Do it right now. 90. 90 dollar sign general of warfare zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com paypal me ggb ministries text to give text bloomer to 844-889-1559 dollar sign general of warfare zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com paypal me ggb ministries text to give text bloomer to 844-889-1559 three persons sowing the seed of 90 right now and i pray that you just would hear god and release it it's not just going to happen for you but it's going to happen for everybody that you know everybody that is in your school or in your company or in your environment of influence sphere of influence it's going to bless them we break this seed we break this curse right now in the name of jesus amen Apostle Overseer, how are you doing today? Uh, Great. Let's challenge the people on the seed that they're to give in Jesus' name. <clears throat> well, Bishop, my seed challenge uh, just today, um, kind of unusual. Uh, the, the scripture is Psalms 130, 136, and says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, his mercy is everlasting. So my seed is a seed of thanksgiving because a lot of times when God bless us if it's something we forget to go back and tell them you know i don't want to ask for nothing else right now i just want to say thank you so I, this is 200 dollars c just saying uh right, right now not, no, i'm not asking for nothing right now of course i have some requests but right at this for this moment i just want to tell you thank you because you know in the in the old testament they had an offering of thanksgiving you know there was sacrificial offers and then there was you don't hear much in the church world about the offering of thanksgiving and so I'm just sowing a $200 seed 
for oh give thanks to the Lord just for all He's done for He spared me my life, He spared my family's life. We, we, uh, my church is doing fine, so just just thank you, just thank you, Amen. Two hundred dollars seat. I'm gonna ask seven people to do that. I'm gonna ask seven people to stand with Overseer King with that two hundred dollars seed today in Jesus' name, Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercies endureth forever. Amen. Apostle? Um, I, I was listening to you, Bishop, and um, I heard the Lord say just before coming on that it's time to do restoration. And now we're in the season of double. Things are coming our double. Things are coming our way in a double. Everything is being multiplied. And so on today, I want everyone to give a double seed. If we're in restoration, that's 70. Seven represents the restoring. And whatever you can add to that 70, most of us can at least do the 140. So we're going to start with 140. And I heard you say about the covenant. And then it brought me back to understand God is saying he wants to give a spiritual restoration. He wants to give a physical restoration. He said, but we broke covenant. And when we broke covenant, we allowed the curse to come in. So mm -hmm. restoration to the covenant agreement that was in place. So let's do a 140 seat. And 140 is 70 and 70, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to ask seven people to do that today. So seven to do 200 and seven to do uh, the uh, seven to do the um, one uh, seven to do the 140 in the name of Jesus. In a moment, I'll be sharing with you your beyond seed uh, for uh, today. Um, uh, one other person I'm asking, believe in God to sow the seed of 90. Two have already responded. One other person get the seed of 90 and release it in the name of Jesus. And we're gonna see the hand of God move in this particular area in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Uh, the strangest thing happened yesterday. And uh, when you were talking, um, Apostle, uh, the Lord took me back into that again. Um, imagine, Imagine all the things that you have accomplished with God in the spirit because he can't be second and he and he, he he sees and he knows everything and he can't he can't be brought into uh, the the knowledge of something that you've gotten right. So there's never a time when God is shocked. He can't be shocked because he's omniscient. He's all knowing. He's all science, all knowing he's all science and there's nothing that he can't he can't be surprised he can't be you can't surprise him these are the things cannot be and so um imagine what you have already accomplished in the spirit that you can't get through the immigration of the natural so there's some things that are already done and shaped in the realm of the spirit and it's done and uh, something happens in the natural realm. And because of the natural realm, you can get through the spirit world that this is what's happening to Daniel in chapter number 10 of, of the book of Daniel. From the first day he prayed, it was answered, those things were all together, but he got caught between the prince of Persia and couldn't get into the physical realm to manifest. And so now he's lamenting over something that he can't see in the natural, but the fight is because he knows it's already done in the spirit. We need to identify the portals or the ports, ports or portals or entrances or dimensions, openings um, where we have free reign and free course and stop fellowshipping around closed doors, doors that are closed. And when you guys were talking about order, setting order opens up portals, period, period. Once the, once the, remember the, because see God, God function, he operates out of, he operates out of law there. Listen, you cannot, you cannot break the law of gravity, but you can experience it. 
You, you, you can't break. Let, you, I don't care how saved, sanctified you are. If you go to the top of that roof and walk off that roof, okay, the law of gravity says whatever is up must be pulled down drastically to the ground. Mm. So you can't break that law, but you can experience it. Go on top of the roof and walk off and you will experience <laughs> bam, hitting the ground. But the law remains in place. When you call things that be not as though they are, under the authority that God gives you through the Holy Spirit, that law cannot be broken. Mm -hmm. It will manifest. Mm -hmm. Every spirit, every agent in the universe begins to move into position to bring to pass what you articulated out of your mouth with the authority of the Holy Spirit showing you what's in the spirit realm that is not manifest in the natural. It is just as simple as that. And I'm speaking to seven persons, seven individuals who are watching today well, actually, I'm speaking to five of them. Five persons who are watching today with the seed of 1,537. That is 1 Corinthians 15, 37. That the seed you put into the ground is not the seed that comes up out of the ground. The body that you sow is not the body that is resurrected. When God speaks to us about something, the minute he speaks to us about it, a lot of times he speaks to us to give him something that we don't have, but we got. So we don't have it, but we got it. What do you mean, Bishop? If you don't have it, you don't got it. Oh, oh wait a minute. You don't have it in your hand, but you got the message from God. And once you get the message from God, you begin to move in the realm of the natural to bring something into place that he's already given you in the spirit. And sometimes it's just an act of faith that releases what God is wanting you to, what God wants you to do. So there are those five of you that's going to sell $1,537. You don't have it, but you got $153.70. That's the tithe of it. And once you release that, it opens up the matrix, the womb, to snatch and bring into your hands all of the other parts of the components. He said to Moses, Moses, what do you have in your hand? He always asks us, what do you have? He said to the water woman, what do you have? She said, a cruise of oil. He said, okay, go borrow pots. <laughs> he said to the woman, what do you have? She says, just a, a few, a little bit of flour and a few oil in a cruise. And I'm going to make, he said, uh, make me one first. I, I, I can't stay much longer on this particular topic. And I can't wrestle and fight with those of you who are watching. The numbers that are logged on right now, I can't, I can't, I can't fight with you on it. I can't spend this time building your faith to trust in a God who's been taking care of you all these years. It is, it, is, it is dishonest and it is disrespectful and it is trickery and hoodwinking when I have to tell you about the man that you sleeping with, when I have to tell you about the woman that you're married to, when I have to tell you to trust the kids that you pushed out of your womb, there's something wrong there. There are certain things that you do know. So I challenge you with the 140 seed, seven of you, that's 77, that's the double. She says, now add to it whatever you can. And I speak to you with the Thanksgiving seed of 200. And I say that there's five of you that are sowing that seed of five of you that are sowing that seed today of 1537, which incidentally came out of our, came out of our consecration 
wolf ecology, um, eschatology class. And I'm speaking to seven of you right now that is sowing the seed of seven that is sowing the seed of 153. 70. They go to number seven again, 153, 70. And then the masses, every one of you who are watching, if you don't have one of those numbers, you can sow the tithe of 15. 37, $15.37, which is the seed of the seed of the seed. You got your marching orders. Father, I thank you. I bless you. I stand in agreement with these women and men of God for this powerful, powerful service that we will be having in the name of Jesus and how you will confront, destroy, and break curses in the lives of your people this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, I don't want to be offensive. Um, I know that the apostle already spoke, and I'm very, very serious in, in this area, but there will be many of you who the Lord spoke to about the 140, and you don't have the 140, so 14, uh, 1490. Get a seed and sow the seed. That's two sevens, 14, 14 and 14. Is seven and seven is 14. So, so do, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. But do not turn a deaf ear to what we are asking you to do in the name of Jesus, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to ask for one more person to sow 90. 90, so we get the three people sowing the $90 seed in the name of Jesus. I'm gonna ask a slew of you to start sowing uh, the seed of 200, 140, okay? Uh, five to sow 1,537. I'm just gonna ask God for two of the five persons to do that today. Uh, or you're sowing the tithe of it in the name of Jesus. People are beginning to respond in their seed sowing right now in the name of Jesus. This today, or today, let me see, I'm sorry. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life right now. Okay, all right. I need two persons sowing at 27 so I complete what I've asked God to do today. And no word shall return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which it was sent to do. So two persons right now, God speaking to you, get a seed of 27, sow it so we can blacken the eye of the devil, okay? We want the devil to come out looking like a woman who did, does not know how to put her makeup on. Too much glue on top, of the, of, on top of the eyelash and she did the smoky eye that makes her look like she got punched in the eye. That's how we want the devil looking. We want him looking like a cross dresser right now. We're gonna destroy the works of the enemy in the name <laughs> of of Jesus. Where does George Blue get this stuff from? I see things inside the spirit, you know, and uh, not everything we see in the spirit, we speak as we see things in the spirit, we speak it. It sounds like this, <laughs> like it's off, but it's not. It is, it is spirits. Because mm -hmm. you had to have a spirit on you to put your eyelash on that way. It's not natural. <laughs> it is not God. What was that again? In the name of Jesus. Okay. So uh, you're, you're doing your personal evangelism. There's a certain number that I want to be at before I start the teaching. And so I need everyone to share with everyone and tell them to, uh, to, to log on. It's going to be a great message today. Okay, overseer and apostle, pray, for, pray, over, pray over the offerings in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that today is a great day of release. God, to help everyone to hear it, to be obedient to the word that has been spoken by the by the, 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 the general God, we thank you right now that the word shall not return void, that it shall accomplish that which it please in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. Father, we thank you on this evening, God, and we thank you that we stand in agreement with Overseer and the Bishop on this evening, and that three-strand cord will not be easily broken. And so, Father God, we believe what you have said, and it will not return void. And so, Father, let the seeds now be released unto to and, and to our broadcast God to do the work in which you've called it to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Okay. Y'all are doing uh, fantastically fine today. All right. This is what I need. And then we're going to the lesson. I need two other persons to sow a seed of 27. And um, those of you to get your tithe in on the seeds that were sown. If you don't have the 200, you're sowing the seed of 20. If you don't have the 140, you're sowing the seed of 14. 140 is 1490, right? Something like that. 
14. 140 is 70 and 70. It's what, 77, the tithe on 140 is what? The 10% um, of the tithe on, on that is? 140, tithe on 140 is. 14. Fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars, right? A tenth. A tenth of one forty is fourteen dollars. Yeah, so I, th I think. How? I'm sorry. Look at us, bad on math. <laughs> <laughs> it's fourteen. It's fourteen dollars. There you go. All right. So let's do this today in the name of Jesus. Uh, about the round time of our offering. Uh, we will be challenging you one more time. Thank you. The person sold that 90. There's another one that just did the 27. I need one other person to do the 27. And uh, the devil's eye is blackened. Now, listen, if you don't sow that 27, both of his eyes is going to look natural. We want to make him look unnatural. We want to mess his makeup up. All right. There you go. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. Uh, all right. There, there's that other person. They just did it just then. Look at that. Let's give God praise. Dollar sign, General Warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. All right. Now, there's two persons sowing the seed of 138. 138. 138. You know who you are. Lord is speaking to you right now. 138. All right. 138. One other person sowing 138. Let's get that seed into the ground. And God is going to uh, bless us in the name of Jesus. Now, when you hear me rattling like this is because I'm in one location. Uh, Vanita's in one location. King is in another location. Uh, are we all in different locations? So sometimes it takes us just a little bit of time to get our flashing done. And I'm waiting on to send me uh, the numbers of how many is uh, watching and how many is sewing. I don't have any screen in front of me that tells me who is doing what, when, and where. And I prefer it that way so that I can be a pure minister of the gospel to you. And so uh, that's what I would like to do. There you go. Thank you so much. I like to be a pure minister of the gospel. You know, sometimes you're watching the live and the people are on and saying, God bless you. I'm so here today. Oh, Cynthia, I tell you, you're a great place. Uh, uh, Shirley, how are you doing today? I oversee it. And they get distracted by all that going up on the side and they're teaching and stuff like that. And people are commenting the same thing and they're trying to teach and they're looking at the comment. Turn the comments off. Preach the message later on if you want to disturb yourself. Because if you're preaching a message that comes from God, the people's comment on it uh, as, 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 it doesn't matter because it ain't your message. You ain't got nothing to do with that. You ain't got nothing to do with how they feel about what God is saying. Your job is to deliver the word. So I turn the comments off. I ain't got no comments up in front of me. All right. Not now, not tomorrow, not ever. All right. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889- 1559. Thank you so much for your seed sowing and for your honesty. You will never, never be broke again, and you will never miss it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Opening statements, guys. Good Bishop, to see you. Um, good to see you. Um, I, I know we're talking about putting God first, and there's something that kind of disturbed me. I hear a lot of people saying um, that you know, people that used to be faithful. To the house of God and faithful to, to God. And now that we have the streaming, we've been streaming for two years and we understand habits and stuff like that. Now things open back up and people are saying, well, I, I'm more comfortable watching it online. And that goes against what we've been talking about this week because God always said, I want you to give a sacrifice. So how can you be comfort and sacrifice at the same time? So I think somewhere along the line, you're going to get it's going, to, it's going to work for a while, but there's going to be a time that you're going to need that anointing that's, that's, that's prevalent in the house. And, you know, we say, well, it comes through the phone, too. Yeah, I understand what they're saying, but, you know, there's going to be a, a time that you're going to need to touch shoulders with somebody. You understand? And uh, there's going to be a time, okay, you're watching online that your mama gets sick, and you're going to want somebody to come and come pray for your mama, but you haven't built a relationship with anyone inside of the 
saints when nobody gonna come. Now you're upset, you're mad, because they well, you have a avail yourself with the saints. The assemble. The Bible, you know, we understand it was it written in Bible time, but it, assemble means assemble if you if you possibly can assemble. So those of you that, that can assemble. Well, you know, you know, you don't have to you don't have to go to the grocery store. They bring the groceries to your house. You don't have to go to the to the uh, restaurant, the restaurant will bring uh, Uber Eats will will come to the place. Walmart uh, has uh, um, uh, on the Amazon, all these kind of things. So in that sense, you don't have to leave your house. Mm -hmm. But those people who don't come to church, don't want to come into the building at the church, still goes to those places. Mm -hmm. Remember this word that I speak to you. God cannot be second. Mm -hmm. I let people do what they want to do. I let them feel the way they want to feel. I let them connect the way they want to connect and touch with the way they, way they want to touch and so on. So forth. we get that and we get that so on and so forth like that. But, you know, I thank God for social media. I thank, I, I thank God for it. Um, but like anything, it has a positive and a negative. You mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I have a family member that's caught COVID like three times. And uh, they said, no, I ain't going to the church because, you know, I go in there. And get sick, I said, well, you ain't got nothing to lose. You, you, you know, you caught it. You understand? They, they, but did they, they catch it any one of any of the three times that they caught COVID? Did they catch it in church? Mm. No, right? Then they didn't scared to go in the church and say, you ain't got nothing no, to I'm lose. No, I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm saying to you is that if they had it three times, out of the three times that they had it, did they ever catch it in church? Mm -mm. No. So they caught it in the places that they go. So then using the, not going to church as an excuse of the gathering mm -hmm. and they ain't got but eight people in their church mm -hmm. but they're going to weather the storm to go in walmart with his three thousand people in there i mean do you, you we can't beat this argument this that 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 mm -hmm. that's one of those that's one of those arguments that we are never going to win people are doing what people are doing but i will say this strongly and we'll touch on a little bit of it in the message um there is a spirit behind this stuff. And we're going to touch on a little bit of it. Amen. Bishop, my opening statement today is <clears throat> don't sabotage yourself, your seed, your crop, or your harvest. Mm. And what I mean by that is the enemy wants to get our focus on what we don't have in the wow. process of what we're doing. And if he can get our focus on that, then what will happen is that we will be planting seeds, but the soil on how we plant them is wrong. We'll plant them in doubt. We'll plant them in fear. We'll plant them in unforgiveness envy, bitterness, and then we expecting something to come back out of a wrong seed that we planted. And so we can't sabotage that seed. What's that scripture, King, that says, uh, but where there be envy, jealousy, and strife, God will not? What? There's, it, yeah. There's, there's every evil word. Let me see. I find it. Yeah. Find that scripture and attach it to what Shirley is saying. Mm -hmm. And the scripture, one of the scriptures that I use, Bishop, was Proverbs 15, 32. It says, because if you reject criticism, or one version said that if you reject sabotage, you are only, you, if you reject, then you are only sabotage yourself. But if you listen to correction, you'll grow in understanding. So we fighting over the seed thing, but we we planting the seed in the wrong soil. So that's why ain't nothing coming back. Yeah. It's not it's not God's will for us to be frustrated. No. It's not God's will for us to be overworked. Keep but talking. we don't. But, but, but we're going to plant this seed in that avenue. And so what it does is then we have all these deceitful things planted in a garden. And we're trying to get certain things to come back. So we want to make sure that our soil is right, that there's no jealousy, no envy, no strife, no unforgiveness, no discord, and so much more. And so yeah. that's where I was. We don't want to sabotage our seed. 
We don't want to sabotage ourselves, but we can sabotage ourselves, our seed, the crop, and the harvest. Yes. The scripture is James 3.16, for where envy and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. James 3.16. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I heard her talk about the, um, uh, she started talking about different types of soil, um, I believe that anger is a soil, envy is a soil, je jealousy is a soil. These are, these are dirt or soil that you place things in and then things grow out of it. And so people say, well, you, she said such a thing and say, come here, let me tell you something. You know where that's coming from. Where that come? See, they're talking about soil and they're talking about a tree that grew out of it. And he's just saying, that ain't got nothing to do with that. Because that ain't right. even the climate to which that would grow. That came from over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, um, everyone who is, who, who is watching, uh, today, let me just check this one more time. And um, uh, um, when you see me get up, uh, I'm going to get up one more time to, to, to get something. And then we're going into our lesson. Uh, uh, I walked out of my room and the TV was blasting. Could y'all hear the TV? No, sir. I, well, see, see, y'all couldn't hear, but I did. And uh, I said, devil is a lie. It's not going to distract me because I'm nosy. And I kept on trying to hear what's going on over there. All right. So in, uh, in about two minutes we're going to be into um our lesson i want you to share it and like it and do your va uh, virtual evangelism because everyone needs to to hear this lesson it's not going to be long but the talk by itself may be we're going to touch on some things thank you so much we're at the number that i would like to have have to already start as people are still coming in and uh so let's put up the ways to give and uh, overseer and uh, apostle challenge the people in the area of their giving and seed sowing, and then we're going to the lesson. All right. So those of you that have heard the word, and if you want to catch faith, and we we're in the season of words, um, we have those those giving platforms in front of us: dollar sign journal of warfare, Zell Bloomer, Bishop Bloomer .com, PayPal, PayPal me at GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to eight four four eight eight nine one five five nine. So we have those challenges. So let us let us obey God. Let us put God first. Let us allow God to be first in our lives. We, we, want, we want to put him first. We don't want him to take his place. We want to give God his place in our life. So let's sow, sow the seed. Let's sow those seeds. If you don't have the, the whole amount, as Bishop said, you sow a tenth of that seed. Sow a tithe of that seed. You, everyone must do something. Everyone must sacrifice. Amen. At this particular time, with this word that's going forth now, this word is powerful. It's a word is mind blowing. It's, it's going to change your life. It's, it's evolutionary. It's going, to, it's going to change your whole perspective. So let's sow into what God is doing. Amen. Let's sow into what God is doing. Apostle. We want to remember that we're doing restoration on today. We're not only doing a physical rest restoration, but we're also doing a spiritual restoration. So that seven represents something complete. That seven represents um, restoration 70 represents that. So out of that one, and I said we were doing it double. So out of that, you take that seven and double it any way possible. It can come from the tide. It can come from wherever, but make sure you're in that restoration period. Yes. And the three seed challenges was the $200 seed. It was a seed of thanksgiving, just giving thanks for all he's done. And it's amazing how, what type of doors just, yeah. just being thankful will open, just being thankful will open many doors. Then we have the 140 and also the 1537. Amen. So just begin to sow. Thank you so much, Bishop. Apostle, Apostle, when is your, when is your uh, conference or convocation coming up? It's supposed to be in October. Okay. That's what okay. we're looking at. Okay. Okay. Um, now, ask me why I asked you that. Why you asked me that, Bishop? I saw in my dream the convocation, your convocation, I don't know where you were at, but it was jam-packed running over. I promised, I almost said, swear to God, you know, I don't talk like that. I, no. I, I, and please forgive me for anybody who heard me just say that just then and, and, and may, you know, say, Bishop, I can't believe you said that, but I, God knows my heart. And, um, hmm. But, I saw it and I don't know where it was, but it was, you was there 
you was dressed beautifully. Your husband was sitting over uh, on the side and we came in and it was jammed. So um, get ready, make your plans, start speaking into the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, you want me to tell you a little bit more about it? Sure. There were people at the altar and you were walking across the altar with prayer shawls, but it wasn't the regular long prayer shawls. It was prayer shawls, almost like prayer cloths, but it was the size of the handkerchief, but it looked just like the prayer cloth. I probably shouldn't have said that openly because I just gave somebody an idea that should be ours. But you know, this this program is going to, uh, uh, um, what, uh, what, what, what would be the word? It will um, date us so that we know what we're talking about. But anyway, and there were people that were kneeling at the altar in three separate sections so you could walk through them kneeling at the altar and you were laying the prayer shawls well they, they were prayer handkerchiefs you were laying mm -hmm. prayer handkerchiefs or prayer cloths on uh their shoulders and the ones that were with you the uh were worshiping and lifting their hands and the ones you laid it on that was in the mist that uh wasn't with you when you came back through the line they were gone. Mm. And I hitchhiked that thing for myself. I took your face out of that vision. I put my own face in that vision along with that. I'm telling you, uh, they was at the altar and people lined up this way and then another group and then another group was three and you was walking through like that and, and to go up this way and go back down that way. And when you came back up to go this way, out of each line, there was like two or three people who wasn't there. It wasn't that they were bad or evil or demonic or anything like that. It's just that they can't go into the next level. Let's go to the lesson today. Thank you, Let's Bishop. To lesson today. You're welcome. Let's go into the lesson today. And uh, 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 yeah, let's just go into, th thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I mean, these weeks has been unbelievable for me. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm, 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 I'm telling you. Let's go into the lesson today. Here we go. Good afternoon and welcome to Warfare Ecology. It's Wednesday morning at 7.02 a.m. And I've been up since 5.30 a.m. praying and warring in the spirit over the release of our churches, ministries, and the people that God has assigned to us to tra travail for in the spirit. It was confrontational and verbal, although there was no one in the house with me or in my master's suite. I found myself weeping and shouting to spirits that tried to take territory in my life, family and ministry that don't have the right or authority to occupy. Then the Lord spoke to me seriously and he said, speak again to every spirit, be it manipulating, controlling, dominating, intimidating spirits, that spirit of Jezebel that has crept into the church through the door of the pandemic. The pandemic has caused many of the saints to roam, to roam drift, wander, and join themselves to wounded, hurt, manipulated, rejected church hurt people that carry a spirit of transfer. Many of the saints in the body of Christ are carrying a satanic deposit from association. In today's program, we're confronting it and breaking it in the name of Jesus. Your worship service will be anointed with fresh oil, your attendance will bounce back physically and virtually, and your finances will be at an all time high. This is the season of multiplication and expansion. The glory of the latter house will not be able to compare to the glory that God is about to release in this house. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to use your superpower of speech, calling those things that be not as though they were and speaking into the atmosphere for every word spoken into the atmosphere shall form. When you speak, Make sure your words line up with God's destiny and purpose for your life. For the words you speak will manifest good health, wealth, great relationships, debt cancellation, creative annuity, influence, and promotion. 
I pray that your eyes of enlightenment and your ears of understanding will be open to receive this word today. That is my prayer in Jesus name, Bishop George Bloomer. That is a long, long opening today, but it is very, very true. And uh, my first prayer before we go to our scriptures today is that the Lord would lift off of the membership of our churches, our congregants, our parishioners, our members, that he lift off of them the spirit of drifting and the spirit of roaming and uh, the uh, having them uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, that they would become spiritual again and get back in place, get back in formation and get back up under the covering of the word that's over their life. That's number one. Number two prayer is um, there are some who uh, didn't leave the church because they're upset with, 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 with leadership or the church or anything like that. It's just that they got into the habit of not being there. And so uh, we're not to take that personal. It's got into the habit of not being there. And they, uh, and they wanted to go to church during the time we, we wouldn't open up. And they went to a church and they've been there for five and six and seven, eight Sundays. And so it became habitual to them. And now they are in an environment that they have no business being in outside of being a visitor, but not parking there. And they're there in, their, in foster care. I pray that a agitation and an urgency of, of, of ministerial uh, success would fall on them and that they would get back up under the right tutelage and leadership that the Lord has blessed them to go under. And then on their free time, they can visit wherever they want to visit. It's very, very important. Uh, um, um, the year that King Uzziah died, I also heard the Lord and um, um, he was highly lifted up in his train field temple. So praying on, on, on that. Then the third prayer is that God would um, cause a spirit of agitation to come on the saints so that they can see that they have been deceived by Corona fatigue, Corona fatigue in the name of Jesus. So that was a little bit of what the opening uh, letter was about. We're going to talk a little bit about the spirit of Jezebel today. Uh, can you put the lesson letter back up one more time? In the lesson um, letter, we laid out the uh, uh, the outline of much of what we're going to be discussing. Now, I'm sharing with you that this lesson was done yesterday morning at 7.02. It is uh, the next day now, and so God helped us to do this in the evening before the morning came. So we prepared the message the day of the day before. I already know how this day is going to uh, come out. And I also know how people are going to um, be able to walk in deliverance and freedom and breakthrough. Um, uh, the, uh, the Lord spoke to me seriously and he said, speak again to every spirit of manipulation uh, Apostle talked today about sabotage, the, the spirit of manipulation. That's a sabotaging spirit. It 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 tricks you. It's, 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 it, it plays games with you. Okay, watch this here. He told me to speak to uh, speak again uh, to seriously to the manipulating and controlling, dominating, intimidating spirits that which. Uh, uh, that spirit of Jezebel. So Jezebel is a manipulating, controlling, dominating, uh, intimidating uh, a spirit that creeped into the church through the door of the pandemic. The pandemic, the pestilence. The pandemic has caused many of the saints uh, to roam, to drift, to wander, wander, I'm sorry. To, uh, to, to, uh, to join themselves uh, to wounded and hurt, manipulated, rejected, church hurt people that carry a spirit of transfer. And many of the saints in the body of Christ are carrying a satanic deposit 
from the association alone and only. So the association is highly infectious and highly contagious, period. Your leader has not done anything to you. And yet now you have a itch and a scratch when your leader comes around because you picked up a spirit. Revelations chapter number two, verses 18 through 23 is our scripture for today. And it reads like this. And unto the angel of the church in Thyteria, write, these things saith the son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which search, searches the reins and hearts and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Okay, so now let's look at this. You can put it back up again. Uh, let's look at this wor word here and verse number 20. He said, verse number 18, 19, I'm sorry, says, I know thy works and thy charity and thy service and thy faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last is, uh, uh, it, it, the last to be more than the first. He says, this is what he said about you. He said about this church, this that fire tire, the church of fire tire. He says, uh, um, I know your works. Okay, so now this letter, keep the letter up for a moment. This letter is a letter that is written to the angel of the church. The angel is angelos, which means messenger. And so this is the letter to the pastor of these seven uh, types of churches that will exist in the dispensation to which we now live in. Uh, he says, unto the angel of the church of Thyatira, write these things, the son of God, and it tells you who this letter is coming from. It's actually coming from Jesus himself. He says, I know your works and your charity. I know that you are charitable. I know you have a good heart. I know that your services, I know that you have great faith. I know your praise and worship services, your music, everything is good. I know that when people are going through crises and trials, you're patient. I know that your works and that they're getting better and better and better. He says, but verse number 20, he says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you. Now, the things that he has against them has nothing to do with their assignment, their gifting, their talents, or their calling. It has to do with their character. One more time. He says, I know your works, your charity, your service, your faith, your patience, your works. And the last is even better than the first. You're getting better at patience, better at service, better at faith, better at all these things. So I have no problem, the problem with your gift, your calling. Your, I, have, I, have an, I have a problem, not with your anointing and your talent and your gift. I have a problem with some things that you are assigned to and uh, you drifting, notwithstanding, I have a few things against you, against the, because watch this, you suffered. Give me the definition of suffered and the synonyms of it. You suffered, you tolerated, you allowed that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So don't tell me how anointed you are. Don't tell me how you can sing. Don't tell me nothing about your tithe pay. Don't tell me nothing about none of that, none of that kind of stuff. Because that, in that area, you're good. But in this area, you have fallen off. The definition?
to submit to or be forced to endure, undergo, experience, to put up with, especially as inevitable or unavoidable, mm. to allow, especially by reason of indifference. What are the, what, what are the synonyms? Endure, experience, feel, know, have, see, sustain, taste, undergo, witness. Now, you know all of this is going on and no one puts this kind of person in check. Hmm. In check. Who is the letter written to? The pastor of the church. Who is the Jezebel spirit after? The pastor of the church. How does the Jezebel spirit exist in the church? The pastor tolerates it. I, ain't, I don't tolerate it. And it comes up in different ways at different times. And sometimes all you get is the symptoms of the spirit of Jezebel in the air, waiting to see who is going to catch the, the entire virus. So when you see it, you got to stop it. Uh, King, go tell such and such a person. I said to them, well, they say you can't. I said, what did I say? And then you go and say, oh, it's done. Good. Because if you let that, if you let that piece right there go, that spirit enters in. Now, sometimes he says, oh, say, okay, no problem, blah, blah, because it's not a spirit. We don't have it. But if God is speaking to me about it, me not having it has nothing to do with me getting it. He told me to move on this. And if I listen to someone carnal, then they become God. And I'm standing over there with fig leaves covering my private parts. I'm not doing that. And each leader that's listening need to understand that. Put the scripture back up. He says, and I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Now, um, uh, he says, uh, because they tolerated and suffered this person to seduce the, and the, 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 that's offered up to idols. In verse number 21, it says, and I gave her space to repent and of her fornication. Now, when we read the word fornication, we immediately think of sex outside of marriage. Fornication also means whoring after other gods or bringing in of other spiritualisms, fetishes, witchcraft, sorceries, manipulation. I give them a chance to say, listen, I let this by, go by this time. Don't do it again. Two weeks later, the person did it again. And I said, well, don't, and two weeks later, they do it again. When you get people, I used to have a person in our church who would rather get forgiveness than get permission. So they always doing stuff and say, oh, and so I said, come here, come here, listen, don't ever do that again. Yeah, but Bishop, I thought that I, nobody asked you to think. And you know, well, I just thought maybe, no, no, no. I was standing there. You was with me. You could have asked me that. You have to deal with these spirits as these spirits are coming. Great day in the morning. This is Warfare Ecology this afternoon. And here it comes. Put the scripture back up. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 he says, behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery, I, adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So when we allow this spirit of Jezebel to flourish inside the church, it destroys marriages. Now, marriages there, we're not talking about husbands and wives, we're talking about the ministries in the church that fit. The ministries in the church that fit. Like the, watch this here, like the praise and worship team or the music ministry is married to the media ministry. And if the music ministry is not getting the law with the media ministry, there is a breach in that relationship. And so the sound is not there. The video guy is all over the place and the music is up in the air. When you talk about the marriages of things, there's got to be a cohesiveness with the worship team 
and the uh, and 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 the head elder of the church who is going to uh, take over the services. If not, the worship leader won't bring the worship to an end. Knowing that they're done and finished, they close their eyes purposely so they can't see the signal of the person telling them to move on. <laughs> Adultery. Adultery. In relationships with other individuals that are not married to your section. Serious business. Put the scripture up again if you can. And so this is where people are. Sorry for spending a lot of time on this. Verse 23, he says, I will kill her children with death. I will kill her children with death and all of the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins of the heart and I will give unto every man according to their works. So he said, when the spirit of Jezebel is alive inside your church, children die before their time. Physical deaths. We've all seen it. Okay. So here's the mistake. When we use the word Jezebel, the minds of the average person immediately goes to Jezebel, Ahab's wife, the wicked queen of Israel. They immediately think about her. There's two Jezebels. One is the wicked queen, a, a, a physical, natural person. And then there's a spirit of Jezebel that could be male or female. It is genderless. It is a spirit that bears the same name. Now, I believe, and many theologians believe this, that the reason why we have Jezebel and the spirit of Jezebel in the Old Testament and Jezebel in the New Testament is because as it is in the natural, so go it in the spirit. So there's a natural application for how Jezebel would rule if she was a person and how she functions if she is a spirit. So if we had time, we don't have time today, we can see some of the comparisons that Jezebel, the natural Jezebel operates through murder, through death. She operates through manipulation, she operates through a through a uh, uh, through sexual sensuality, painting her face, letting down her hair. She this is what she does. In the spiritual sense, Jezebel in Revelations, uh, um, she uh, uh, moves on people who are rejected and would use sex, seduction, seditions in order lasciviousness, a, a state of nudity, in order to pull people in to that particular uh, uh, place. If I'm a man and I'm the type of man who is a visual man, I'm a visual person, then short skirts and low cleavage and stuff like that is a bad deal for me because I'm a visual, visual individual, okay? Jesus dealt with these types of men. There were men in the Old Testament when Jesus came on the scene that uh, 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 did not sleep with women did not uh, cheat on their wives. They went to parlors and looked at naked women. So when they came to Jesus and they said, man, uh, uh, Moses says this, what do you say about divorce? Jesus said, I say that any man looketh on a woman to lust that her has already committed in his heart. Jesus is the first one that introduces unto us pornography. Pornography, visualization. And so when you have this kind of thing, you get this picture in your mind and you can't shake it. So the spirit of Jezebel is looking for leaders who potentially could have that panona, panona that pornographic uh, uh, um, uh, 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 eye that Jesus says needs to be plucked out for it is better that you go into the kingdom without an eye than to stay here on earth and burn in hell. Uh, the, the scripture outlines these uh, principles uh, for us. So the wicked queen functions in this particular way, in the natural, and then the spirit functions that way. So we know who Jezebel the wicked queen is. We don't know 
who is carrying the spirit of Jezebel inside our church unless this is taught. Now watch this, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Jeze the Jezebel spirit in our church is not after the entire congregation, although it uses the entire congregation. It is only after one person in the congregation. And I fought this spirit twice in my life. And I'm sure I may have to fight it again as we are going through different levels and what have you. And um, it's not an easy spirit. So uh, next slide, I ask a question uh, in opening up this lesson after our scripture. And that question, Cynthia, is what? What is the spirit of Jezebel? The spirit of Jezebel is a demonic, manipulating, seducing force aimed at the angel of the church, which is the pastor. This spirit is normally hosted by a close friend of the pastor or the ministry. Normally a person, male or female, whose root of influence is relational or financial. A spirit that appoints itself to position of authority. Wow. Okay, so let us uh, look at this very, very carefully. The spirit of Jezebel is not a visitor who just joins your church. You would never let that person in. It has to be someone that you have regard, respect for, been around you for a long, 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 long time. And then in the drift, in the roaming, in the uh, 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 in, in the in a habitual new habit that arises up and because you dearly dearly love the person you trust them and they begin to work their uh jezebel witchcraft on you they begin to work it and sometimes the person who the spirit of jezebel is in is not aware of it when it first starts so just going and being mad at a person is for we wrestle not against flesh and blood so they don't always know that they are the person that has it but later on they like what they're getting out of what they're doing and so they submit to the spirit and then they know and that's when the conflict really comes in uh, in it my next question is this how does jezebel get in Revelations 2.20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Self-appointment. One of the ways to identify the spirit of Jezebel is through the title seeker, position seekers, people that seek positions and love titles. Now this sometimes is hard to detect because the scripture teaches us in Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work nor device nor knowledge nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Okay, so I want to open up the floor now and I want to talk about before I want to go to ways that the, the Jezebel spirit get it, or should I just go ahead and do the ways that spirit and then we can talk about everything at one time. What, what do you what guys is? say? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, ways to identify the spirit of Jezebel. This is how you know that this thing is operating in you on your church and around you. And I've dealt with the spirit twice. Here we go. How does Jezebel get in? Titus 1.15. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Here you see where one's discernment can be challenged through scripture. Your pure heart is giving people a chance. I'm sorry, your pure heart is giving people a change while their corrupt heart is taking advantage of you. Yeah, we, 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 we make mistakes too. It's giving them a chance while your corrupt heart is taking advantage of you, uh-huh. Ways to identify the spirit of Jezebel, fear. First King nine, one, two, three. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done 
and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Bathsheba, where belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. Number two. Oppression. First Kings 19, verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey unto the wilderness and came and sat down under a, a, a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Mm -hmm. Fatigue. First King chapter 19, verses five through six. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Sickness, Revelations 2, verse 22. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then, and them that commit adultery with her into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Immorality, Revelations 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my, first, my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Idolatry. Revelations 2, verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Repeating yourself and rehearsing what you are going to say to a person who is under your authority. First Kings 19 verses 10 and 14. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left. And they said, and they seek my life to take it away. Okay. Now in a moment, we'll go through these, the, these principles of, of it. Now I've taught on Jezebel on several, several times but I wanted to preach on Jezebel today as the Lord began to reveal it to me uh, as the door of the pandemic opened, opened up a door for the spirit of Jezebel to actually move in and live. Can you imagine there's people who have not been to church with each other and stuff like that and still have a conflict, has not been it, seen each other. For, we have people in Bethel who haven't seen each other for two years, have not physically seen each other for two years. And will say, I don't know if I'm going back to Bethel. I don't know. Da, da, da. All that kind of stuff is going on. What do you mean? What, what, who bothered you? Is it about, about? It's a spirit for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Why don't the saints know it? Because guess what? In their heads, they are saved, not in their hearts. If thou would confess, it's a confession of your tongue. It's not a conviction of your heart. So there's a lot of people who think they are saved, but are not. 
And this is how this spirit creeps in here. Oh my God. Let's open up the door. What jumped out at you guys as you were as we were going through the lesson today? Well, a lot of I can see the spirit of Jezebel and in several uh, several of those situations. You know, just think of if you're a higher a pastor and you've got strongholds that's been in that church for 70 years. Now the pastor come in and the pastor is, is the supreme authority. He's the angel of the house. And so you got these ruling authorities that's been there since the grandmama died. They said, look, um, you make sure you do with that message at 115. Okay, because we know we got to we got to be up so and so so by 130. And because of the position and, and because of the salary and stuff like that, he has to he takes heed to that. So now that's a blatantly spirit of Jezebel called God. What if God wants to deliver those people that they at 125? What if God wants to come in there at 125? But because of the spirit of Jezebel, people have not been delivered because of the, the, the uh that, that that satanic voice. And so we have to be careful when you a hiring pastor. When you when you are a um uh, a hiring pastor, it's, 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 it's very I don't know how you would go into a situation like that. If you know a church is going to hire you, there, there are certain questions that you would probably would have to ask. Do I get do I get supreme rules, supreme reign? I know we have to have deacons or, or, or trustees or whatever, but uh, what position would I stand in decision making when God speaks to me? And it's called, called the Bible. The man in the Bible got in trouble because because they carried the ark on a on a on a uh, on a board, and God had to kill him. God had to kill us. I remember, he could kill us because it was supposed to be carried on the shoulders of the priest. But because they carried it on the boards, God killed the guy that touched the ark. And so we have to be very careful there. That well, he bold, killed the guy. He killed the guy that touched the ark, which was the son of who? Whose son was that? I know it was. It was usually that was son of our uh, ace. Ace. It was ace. Ace. Oh. It was the son. It was the son of the house that the ark of the covenant had been in for mm -hmm. twenty years. The so they were familiar with handling the glory of God any kind of way. Mm -hmm. So that Ark of the Covenant shifting, being on the board, shifting and him pushing it back and so on and so forth like that is another clear indication of the spirit of Jezebel in operation because he had been around the Ark for 20 years. He'd become familiar with it mm. and felt that he could touch it when he got ready to touch it. He could touch it at his father's house. Mm. But he couldn't touch it when it was on the move. Mm. Mm -hmm. When it was on the move, it was in the form of its glory. Glory. When it was when it was in the temple, it was in the form of being a priest. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So it's sure. it, once it's seated in the temple, it's in its priestly role as a covenant. When it's on the move, it's the glory of God moving. Mm -hmm. And anyone that makes an attempt to try to move God from moving. God will kill them. And you notice in those churches, they have funerals back to back. I meant back three and four. I mean, we know we have to die. But I'm talking about there's a curse that comes with that back to back, back to back, back to back. Then, then you look up the pastors there. Now he can run the church like he wants to because all of, the, all of the old heads are dead. He had to kill them. God had to kill them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jezebel. Mm -hmm. Apostle? Um, what stood out to me, of course, the whole lesson, but the part that you was talking about the marriage, how the covenant and how everything, and that's how we supposed to be in the church. We are married to the things of the church. And here I said ministries had gone wild. So, you know, you know, ministries just gone wild. This one is not communicating with this one. And then the familiarity, because you just talked about that, how we just get laid back. And sometimes the leaders get comfortable because they are tired, because they are worn out. And then they get, they lay back and they allow all these things to happen. And I think it's when we going back in that we have to be sharper than we have ever been sharp. Yes. More so, I mean, I know we want people close to us. I know we want situations, but we can't allow it to a certain degree because if we allow it to a certain degree, we're going to allow the spirit of Jezebel to take full reign over the church. And when he steps in and takes full reign over the church, the spirit in operation, then 
it destroys what God was already building up. I agree. And I want to go back to the marriage uh, part of it. The, uh, there are several marriages within inside the, uh, inside the church. Um, there are, there's the, there's the marriage between the, uh, uh, the deacons and the pastor's vision. If the deacons and the pastor's vision are on the rocks, the church is stagnated. All right. Okay. Now deacons and trustees, they might not always be, um, spirit filled at the level of an elder. They should be, but they might not always be. Right. They might not always be, but they should be. Uh, when God speaks to us, he speaks to us in the, in the overtone and frequency or the linguistics of an empty barrel with just enough meal in it for us to eat it today and die. That's how he speaks to us. So a person that does not have relationship with God sees that there's only enough for tomorrow that forces them to say to you, no today. Mm -hmm. But those of us who are obeying God, we understand that what you need for tomorrow will be there tomorrow. It's not there today because I'm giving you every day your daily bread. Right. Now try to explain that to a person who does not see in the spirit. Bishop, we ain't got it. I, we, 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 it it'll be fine. Just, just, just do so. Yeah, but I, Bishop, hey, 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 you are getting frustrated over something you need to be frustrated over. Take that right now and pay that. And then they do it. And on the ride home, a call comes through. Someone put in the offering forty thousand dollars. Hello. There's not enough for overflow, but it's enough to meet the, all the needs that we're going to have. And be, because the barrel doesn't overflow, the barrel sustains. Right. And so there's a marriage between different, 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 different groups and so on and so forth like that. And I've learned how not to talk to everyone because I'm not married to them. I talk to the persons that I'm married to within the church because we have that covenant and they talk to the people that they're married to and they talk to the people that they're married to and the whole church comes together. Definition of marriage. The state of being united as spouses in a consensual and contractual relationship recognized by law. Okay, uh, synonyms. Match, matrimony, wedlock. Match, matrimony. These two are a marriage. They get along fine. That thing works. The dancers are in sync with the praise and worship songs that are coming from the worship saint leader. There's certain songs, I don't care how well of a dancer you are, you cannot dance to it. Because <laughs> it has no dance to it. That's when you got to know to take your flag and hold it and stand still while that song is going on. And then many, when they break into it, then you, then you swing out. In, in a marriage, you understand that. If you don't understand that, you never sing the songs that the dancers can't dance to. And so that there's parts of the service that were never brought into the uh, dimension of worship because we need that song in order to bring them into it. But because the dancers can't sing, dance to it, you don't sing it. Are you crazy? <laughs> but we have these kind of problems. Okay. A key word that I heard Bishop was united. 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 Because when we have that unity there, then that's when you see church growth. That's when you see the explosion of the Holy Ghost. That's when you see all the supernatural things happening, people being here, the united part. My God, that just sucked all of the air out of the room. United. <laughs> 
and a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. Okay. So uh, we want to go and we want to look at the, uh, want to go and we want to go over this thing, look at ways to identify the uh, spirit of Jezebel. And the first slide um, was, um, was fear, was, 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 was fear. So um, here you have, here you have uh, um, Elijah who had slayed uh, 400 prophets of, 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 of Baal, 400 prophets of uh, Jezebel's prophets, 400 of them. He wipes them out and then fear falls on where he flees from this woman. This, this is a guy who just wiped out 450 prophets of Baal. And she sends a word to him. If I don't do to you what you did to them by tomorrow, and what does he do? He flees. How do we deal with the spirit of fear? We deal with the spirit of fear by keeping our ears closed to individuals who knows where our fears are stored. We all have them. No man is fearless. But there are people. See, that's why this Jezebel spirit gets, it's, it, it, it operates out of people who are very, very close to you. In your closeness with a person who's your, your driver, your, 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 your valet, your Bible toter, uh, your first assistant, after a number of years, that person, whether you articulate it to them or not, that person knows what will set you off. They've Absolutely. been around long enough to know it. Absolutely. They know what will set you off. They know what you can hear. They know what you cannot hear. They know what route to take you and when they're driving. They know what church to pass by. They, 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 they know it. They know it. They may not articulate it to you, but they know it. So what Satan does is not so much come after the leader personally, he does it vicariously. He goes to the people who serve the leader, jumps on them, and then it jumps on the leader. That's how he operates. That's exactly how he operates. And so with me, when it happens, I don't even deal with the person who just conveyed to me. I just hang the phone up on him and go to the person immediately. I am keen in that area. Keen, I sense when it happened. See, your gift, those of you that are watching, how many of you got watching? Those of you that are watching, your gift is of, is of the, of, is, is, is so important that you cannot outsource your gift to one person. Because if that person gets mad at you, then guess what? Listen, my daughter, and people that I know and love for years was the praise team. When the pandemic hit, they showed up all of about three weeks. After the third week, we started playing cuts and playing videos of it. We had to stop that because when they were singing, they were singing the same songs all the time. So live you can do that you can't do that on air so i had to move into play now watch this here my daughter's a praise leader i have had other people who who, who were on the team uh, 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 uh sharon i known forever nicole i know forever uh, uh these are the people i know they have no problem with me suddenly somewhere along the line thank you somewhere along the line in this long stretch mike all of them it's the pandemic. Watch this pandemic, and we in, and we are in shelter and in place, which means there's no place to go, and they still didn't come. Still didn't come. None of them has the testimony of me picking up the phone, calling them, saying, "You did it." No, I didn't. I said, "I, I recognize this spirit here. I recognize it." I made one attempt to say, "Can you pull this thing together?" So on and so forth, like that. Blah 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 blah. To bring everyone back together. Yeah, Bishop, we went, but the praise and rehearsal with rehearsals and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking in my mind, wait a minute here. 
over the past year, this is about a year at that time, over the past year, I've been doing praise and worship by myself. I've been doing the announcements by myself. I've been preaching by myself. I've been doing this by myself. So let me be very clear. I understood that there was a spirit, but the spirit was coming against me. It wasn't coming against the church, but there was no church. It was coming against me. And those persons who I had invested in, been kind to, was okay with me being there by myself, uncovered. Uncovered. You never heard a complaint out of me. As we begin to move to open up the church, Easter Sunday, up until last Sunday, praise and worship team is in place, band is in place. Listen to me. Listen to me. Those spirits are against us. But if you take a moment to lament over it, Satan wins. Mm -hmm. He wins. So I began to confront him by saying, I don't know who's in this church. I don't know who's coming back. I don't know. I don't know none of that. But what did God do for me for two years? What did he do for me for two years? He put me in a room by myself for two years. So I'm pretty good if only 50 shows up. Mm -hmm. 90 shows up, I'm great. 200 shows up, that's a thousand. But I'm good now because he put me in the room, guess what? By myself. By myself. Feels good to be around people, but guess what? He put me in the room by myself because he cannot be second. And he said, as long as you honor me, boy, I will deal with your fears. Satan sends fear in. This prophet ran from one woman after slaying 450 prophets. That's not a good deal. God ain't playing that. God is upset with him. He don't, he don't like that. I showed you what you can do. And you're going to let her talk you out of it? Get your focus back, boy. Get your focus back. Number two. <laughs> depression. Now, you're not going to tell me, Brown, you didn't have a season of depression. Oh, yeah, I did. Ain't no preacher going to tell me that during COVID they didn't have a season. I don't care who sure you I are. Did. Every last one of us. And when we went to the leadership conference with Bishop Jakes and stuff like that, in one of his sessions, he talked about he, he on top of the world. Well, you would think. He said, oh, when that thing comes in on you and it closes. What? what? Boy, I'm like, <laughs> what? We've been through it. We've been through it. What does that scripture say on it? First Kings nine and four. What does it say? But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a, a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And watch this. He runs from the woman through fear and his fear leads him to a juniper tree. And then he asks God to kill him. The contemplation of suicide through depression it's in the scriptures uh-huh and he said it is enough now O lord take away my life for i am not better than my father's wow let's talk about that for a few moments hmm. well Ooh. if you're not careful with depression and you entertain it too long it can take you completely out. Mm -hmm. And just like the scripture said, he went and sat under juniper tree and just come, that's it, Lord. And a lot of times we need to stop faking it like we okay and find somebody to talk to, get it all out of us and get it out of us, gone and scream and holler. Now you can't talk to people in the church and you shouldn't. I put it like that. Get you a therapist and talk to them let it all out. So it's okay for Christians to have a therapist? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. You should have one because especially leaders, what you go through, you can't share that with everybody because they'll use it against you later. <laughs> Make you seem weak and whatnot. And it's not that. you human. Yes. You got Christ in you, but you're human. And you need to talk some stuff out. Yeah. There's a way you have to process things as you hear them. Hear them. Like therapists need therapists because when people, they'll unload on you and you're taking on not only physical, you're taking on spiritual. And if you're not strong enough, you need to, you need to learn. They got, there's a way that you have to flush these things from you. you have, there's a way, there's a, there's a way to, and I have a, a way in my life that I process, process. Cause you know, I have a lot of information coming at me daily through emails, through texts, through phone calls, through messages, through this one calling. I mean, you got me like it, within an hour, I can have a hundred different messages coming just all at one time, just all day long, all day long. I mean, just then, then I, there's, a, there's a certain way I have to I flush. You flush, you know, there's a, there's a, and so I don't think everybody needs a flushing system. And it's another thing that you have to do as a leader. You cannot sit back and blame yourself for everything. Because if you sit back and blame yourself for everything, look at yourself, examine yourself, you know, you might need to straighten out in some places, but you cannot blame yourself for everything. Because if you blame yourself for everything, then you get in another level of depression. And in that level of depression, you really don't ever function right. Mm -hmm. Definition of depression. A mood disorder that is marked by varying degrees of sadness, despair, and loneliness, and that is typically accompanied by in inactivity, guilt, loss of concentration, social withdrawal, sleep disturbances, and sometimes suicidal tendencies. Absolutely. The scripture talks about it. And then he went and ran and set up under a juniper tree and asked God to kill him. This is enough. Yes. I'm not as good as my father's. It's all my fault. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be in this mm -hmm. situation if it wasn't my fault. The devil That's is fine. a lie. It is not your fault. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is the same guy, Bishop, that called down fire on three groups of 50. Of, I mean, this called down fire. This is the same guy that called the fire to lick up the water in the trench, proving God is God. But one of his problems is what? what? What what is one of his problems? One of his problems is that on the natural side, something is revealed on the spiritual side. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he's running from Jezebel, fear, and he's running from Jezebel is because he's one of those visual guys. Mm -hmm. She paints her face, lets down her hair. And immediately there's an attack on his lasciviousness. Mm -hmm. There's an attack on his sensuality. And he's trying to obey God. And the way, the best way to obey it is to run away from this, from this whore who is coming after me with everything that she has. It's a serious thing. And this is the reason why we have to be protected. And, and for us, Bishop, it could be how it attacks us. It could be um leaders i'm gonna say leaders is it could be our heart because our heart is to do this for this and do this for this yes. one and do that for this one and do that and sometimes we don't we don't have to understand that we don't have to pull the heart out the way well this is what i say i say in order to deliver us from a spirit of jezebel many times god has to break our heart absolutely in order to deliver us because we absolutely. care for the people who is killing us Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Yes. The next one is. Bishop, you said something earlier uh -huh. about, about concentration house. I know that happened to me before. It was a period of like several months. I lost my concentration because I didn't know how to focus and channel things. And uh, then Bishop Mark House came on on one Friday. I think I saw the seed. He said, God, God said he's going to give you your mind, your mind back and your concentration. From that day on, I got my concentration back because, you know, with the things coming at you all the time, you got to, you got to, you know, we got to know how to drive through and you, and one person trying to get through to you 
will offset everything. I need to speak to Bishop. Need to speak to Bishop. That's what What I can I, I, right now they do it. I just say okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even don't even entertain it because you know the enemy want to knock you off focus. And then when she knocked the head off focus, the whole the whole thing is 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 just. just all over the place, things are out of order, things that should be meshing together are not meeting in time. The people are not on stage on time, and the, 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 everybody's the whole, the whole, the, the, the knocker arm on the train. What's it called? The rocker arm? Yeah, rock arm. The rock arm. The rock arm is, 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 is the hammer. The, the rock arm does this, yeah. and the hammer hits it to make right. sure that when it stops, it doesn't stop like this. It doesn't mm -hmm. stop like this. He hits it one time to make sure it stops like mm -hmm. this so it can pick back up again and keep moving. So the spirit of Jezebel gets which one of the arm, the one that's supposed to gets gets hold of this one. You, you know, well, the spirit of Jezebel makes sure she hits it when you stop, so you stop like this and lock. You can't mm. lift. Remember, can't the train is moving by the hands being lifted. Mm, 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 mm. The wheels like are moved by once the like wheels like this, it can't move. It's deadlock. It moves like this. Mm -hmm. So the rocker arm is to hit it to make sure it goes back up. To hit it, make, so what Jezebel does is that when it's pulling into the station, she hits it twice. Pop, pop. So it can't, it grit locks, and boat mm -hmm. is like this, and the train can't can't move. Mm -hmm. It moves when the hands are up. Uh, even though, nope. even though how powerful that locomotive is, it still can't move if it's on deadlock. It's going deadlock. It's going wow. deadlock. And that's what she does. You can she be annoying. Knows how to, she knows how to hit you straight. It's called prostration. Mm -hmm. And one scripture in uh, uh, the, the one translation of rise, shine for the light is coming to glory. It says uh, 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 rise from the prostration and frustration over which circumstance that kept you. It, it, it's set up to lay you out like this so you can't move. Mm. And if you left in this position, you, you can, can start up. again. Every time something good and great goes for us, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Hey, hey. All right. All right. Uh, the next one is Fatigue. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a curse, a cruse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Okay, so now the, 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 he says, listen, uh, uh, the sign of the spirit of Jezebel was on him and it made him tired. And so he says, he's tired, tired. I got to go to the beach. I got to go to a vacation. I got to go because it's, the spirit is driving. And listen, if you don't go to the beach, you're going to die. If you don't go to the park, you're going to die. If you don't, when you feel it and it comes on you strong, you must get out of that place. Now, he's not being rebuked for leaving. He's not being rebuked for sleeping. He's not being rebuked for running. None of those things, none of these things are rebuked. God is laying it out so we can tell when the spirit is around. Mm -hmm. These are the instructions so that you can, the symptoms of it so that you can see and know that these spirits are around. Fatigue. And watch this. And he wakes up. And when he wakes up, God says, come on, get up. You got to eat. And after you eat, you can go back to sleep again. He's going to nourish us. Uh, definition of fatigue. I've been there. I, I, I've been there. Just, yeah. just, just can't get up out of the bed. Just can't get up out of the bed. It's just, I, I just can't get up. It's just too much. Now I'm in a place right now where I can't get up out of the bed. It ain't got nothing to do with fatigue. What it got to do with is all these lessons I'm preparing. <laughs> I ain't depressed. I ain't in fear. I ain't in none of those things. That's why I can teach this message. But I have been there. Uh-huh labor weariness or exhaustion from labor exertion or stress okay. where does the exertion and stress came, come from from elijah the prophet from killing the 450 prophets mm -hmm. he, he 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 should be able to lay down but he mm -hmm. can't sleep 
securely because there is a fear and a depression that is accompanying the fatigue. Mm -hmm. And that's coming from that spirit. Okay, next slide. Sickness. Behold, behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Uh, this curse of this curse of sickness, um, I believe now this is just George Bloomer talking. I can't prove this in the Bible, but I believe that this sickness is a pre existing sickness that once was there and it left. And now it is coming back because the spirit of Jezebel is driving that spirit back to you to put you back in the bed. But so Bishop, that, like Bishop, that actually happens, though. That mm -hmm. actually happens. If you're depressed and then you take on fatigue and then if you have a pre-existing condition in your body, it, it automatically, like if you're diabetic, your blood sugars go up yes. or your blood sugars drop it's too low. So that's that's a true statement. That yes. actually happens. And I believe it's brought on by, I believe it's brought on by this spirit of, mm -hmm. of Jezebel that frustrates you to this particular point. Now Absolutely. remember, this doesn't happen to, this, 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 the Jezebel spirit uh, doesn't fight a person who is carnal. They have those persons. When they, when this Jezebel spirit comes, this Jezebel spirit comes on people who pray, who seek God's face, who are anointed, who are gifted. That's who the spirit comes upon. Jezebel ain't in that church down the street where they doing all that foolishness. She ain't, she ain't there. There's Jezebel spirit. There ain't no Jezebel spirit in there. Ain't nobody persuading the pastor. The pastor is the Jezebel there. <laughs> if I try to move him, he doing it himself. And I know a few of them that is just like that. Uh -huh. Bishop, the, the devil is after people. You, you see all these people possess. They say they possessed with demons. They don't have nothing and stuff like that. Well, why would the devil waste his time with that? He already got. He's he's after people with influence. They got cities under their belt and big and churches, and that's who they got. So if I can get this one right here, I can destroy the whole nation. You know, I said, man, my, my, I got demon problems. Why you ain't got no job? You know I mean, you're, you're able to work, you know, stuff like that. What in the world? I mean, so that he wasting his time, you know. <laughs> you do, you, you, you all right? <laughs> but, but the, the one that's got authority and the power to call down fire and can prophesy, can prophesy your, your, your hat off. And that's just said, okay, wait a minute, I need to, I need to get him sidetracked right now. So that's the one the spirit goes after, and that's we, we have to be very Absolutely. careful. Absolutely, to destroy you, to, to, to move you out of the way. So that assignment for that area or that territory or that arena that you're in, that you don't speak no more, you know, just like warfare ecology. Uh, can we silence Bishop George Bloomer because he's speaking all across the world, changing people? Can we silence this person? Can we do? No, you can't. <laughs> That's the whole object. Let me just move them out the way, out the way, so that'll stop. So people won't know who they are. So they won't know who I am. Mm -hmm. mm. <sighs> Next one. Next one. There you go. Immorality, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which call for self a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Let's take the sex out of it for a few moments and just po focus on the fornication that is done in our ministries through the mishandling of the word of God. That's why people are lost. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are immoral things that happen. When Noah is naked, the Hebrew word for naked does not mean exposed. The Hebrew word for naked means indecent behavior. 
he saw his father do some indecent behavioral things with his clothes off. And then he shared it with other people that released that spirit and that spirit is still in the earth today. Where the other son went in backwards with a cover and covered the indecent exposure and the covering anointing is still in the earth today. Right. Immoral behavior. Next one. Oh. Idolatry. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffereth that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that when a man divorces a woman, he causes her to live in adultery. And if she would marry, it says, the man who marries her who is divorced commits adultery. But she's an adulteress under this law by merely being divorced by him. Just the fact that he divorced her. In fact, get that scripture. Uh, you, you know that scripture, King? It says, um, it says, uh, Moses said this, but Jesus said, I said, any man let his wife go saving the cause of fornication causes her to live in adultery. And any man who marries her who is divorced commits adultery also. So it's a powerful text. Um, Matthew 5.33. See what it read that, Cynthia. Let's see that. Five thirty-three. Mm -hmm. You might have to go up, but just as a starting point. It started in verse thirty-one. It hath been said, "Whosoever shall put away his wife, not let him give her a writing of divorcement." But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication causes her to commit adultery and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Now, many people never saw that in that text. Look at the text again. She's an adulteress. She's an adulteress just because her husband divorced her. Just because her husband divorced her. She ain't, she, she ain't even been married again. Read the text one more time. It has been said whosoever put away his wife let him give her a writing of divorcement give her a bill of divorcement a get uh-huh but i say unto you but i say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife whosoever shall put away his wife divorce her saving for the cause of fornication watch this except for the her. cause except for the cause of fornication now pastor shirley uh, overseer King, guess what? She can't commit fornication because she's married. Mm -hmm. The only way you can commit fornication, you have to be what? Unmarried. Fornication mm -hmm. is unmarried individuals. Married people commits adultery. So under that law, there was no way that she could be divorced. And if she got divorced, Automatically, she was an adulteress. Now watch, watch, watch where it goes. Uh huh. Next verse. Causing her to commit adultery. Uh huh. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced. Stop. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced. Committed adultery. Committed adultery. And whosoever marries her that is divorced, he got he got to be divorced in order to marry to marry her. So if 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 she got married to a man who has never been divorced, then he's not an adulteress. You know why? 
-hmm. because it's the woman that makes the adulterous man under that covenant and under that code. Remember, men could have as many wives as they wanted to. Next one, which is the big one, and we're closing. My God. My God today. Repeating yourself and rehearsing what you're going to say to a person who is under your authority. Verse 10 of 1 Kings 19. Verse 10 of 1 Kings 19 says the same thing that verse 14 says. What God is, what, what, what he's laying out here in this particular text is that king is under my authority. The spirit of Jezebel is operating in king. Because the spirit of, Je of, 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 of Jezebel is operating in king, I am tired, I am fatigued, I am now sick, and I'm afraid to approach King. He's working for me. I'm not working for him. I'm afraid to. So what I do, I start rehearsing. When King get here, I'm gonna tell him da 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 da. And this is what I'm gonna tell King. I'm gonna tell King, and I have to courage build myself up to tell him something. And he's working for me. I'm not under his authority. He's under my authority. That's how you know the spirit of Jezebel is in operation. Who in your church are you afraid to approach? Remember, now that's not who King is afraid to approach. He's not the pastor. It's only referring to one person in the church. That's the pastor. Who is he afraid to approach? And anytime I even feel that spirit coming up, that's when I attack the person or I attack them. I don't wait for them to come. I attack them. Call them and tell them I said, and, and, and right this moment, oh, oh, it just comes out. You have to, listen, you have to. If you don't, that spirit will rule your church. Okay. The last slide for today. And the last slide for today is how to break this spirit. One way and one way only. Confront it expose it and call it out. You confront it with your bully pulpit from the pulpit. You expose it from the pulpit. You call it out from the pulpit. Even if you're afraid, do it in the pulpit. And when people see it, they're going to say, yeah, you ain't taking advantage of my pastor. The devil is a lie. Is that what I was up under? Is that the spirit that was controlling me? He says, rebuke openly that others may fear. I'm going to yeah. say it this way. Rebuke openly that others may assist you in ridding the house yes. Yes. from this demonic force. Yeah. And then you're going to have other people, about 25 or 30 people come to you crying and weeping. Wow, Pastor, I didn't, you know, they'll come to you. I did, you didn't realize that all this was going on under the skies of that spirit till you broke the spirit now. You know, the, the two essences coming out of people are repenting. So I, I didn't mean I fell up under it too. And then now you see what was going on. And then that next Sunday, you're going to have a revival the next Sunday. It's going to be a, it's going to be a revival the next Sunday. It's going to break forth. You broke, you exposed, and you broke the spirit of that thing. Well, I thought it was a good day today. Uh, we got, uh, uh, we got nine so minutes before we have to surely go. But uh, I want to say this to those of you who are watching, uh, get your seed in the ground. Uh, we didn't even stop to do our offering, which starts at 630 because the message was powerful. I pray that the anointing of the Lord rests upon every last one of you who watch today and that you would get your seed right now in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Um, I'm going to ask uh, those seven persons to sow that seed of 200, the seven to sow the seed of 142. Uh, uh, the rest of you. I want you to sow, begin now, to sow your seed of, 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 of the tithe of whatever that seed is. So there are those of you that are going to, you know what? Hmm. Wow. The devil is a liar. He's defeated and he wants to attack you in the area of your finances. 
going to attack you in the area of finances. There, there's a person watching right now. And he tried to railroad me in that quick second. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Who your seed is 1537. 1,537. And you know God is speaking to you about it. Just get it. Just get it and release it. Just get it and release it. Hmm. Just get it and release it. There's a few of you watching. Your seed is one, five, three, hundred and fifty-three dollars. It's the tithe of the fifteen thirty-seven, and I'm asking God to move on every person who God is telling to sow that seed that don't have it to sow the tithe right now to get it under this prophetic anointing and prophetic covering in the name of Jesus, and then the rest of you can sow uh, the. The fourteen hundred, the fourteen dollars, or the fifteen seventy, or so with the seed that the Lord is speaking to you to sow today in the name of Jesus. Are you ready right now? Let's do this. And again, I feel it strong. I feel it very, very strong. And the minute you sow that seed, things are going to turn. Things are going to change for you. The minute, the very minute you sow that seed. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I'm waiting for the seed sowers. 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 I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask uh, 50 people right now to sow that seed of 1400 50 to sow the seed of $14, $14 I'm sorry, of $14. 50 persons sow the seed of $14. That's the 140 That's the 140 That's the 140 of $14. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. And under it, put victory. Just put victory under it. And let's move with this. Father, I thank you. I bless you over the next five minutes. 50 persons are giving up a Starbucks, are giving up a haircut, are giving up a nail that popped off. 50 persons are doing it in this moment. Trusting you. In the name of Jesus. Dollar sign general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. I'm waiting on you to start releasing that seed of $14. Of 14. Of 14. All over the the line. All over the 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 internet. 14. Yes, you're 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 releasing that right now. Get that seed in your hand and you're going to be able to testify that you have gotten a seed in the ground and you are expecting God to show up and to do the miraculous in your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name Jesus Jesus precious Jesus we have the victory all right, start releasing that seed right now in the name of Jesus. 14, 14, 50 of you sowing, 14. I'm just believing God for my household. I'm believing God for a miracle. This spirit of Jezebel is broken in and over your lives today. It's broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken, it's broken. It's broken. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at Bishop Bloomer. Listen, I feel this thing strongly. Where's that person that the Lord is speaking to about the 1537? The 1537, 1,537. This, it will break the back of poverty this seed will line you up with God and with your prophetic destiny. This seed is going to do it. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. Text Bloomer to 
1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You want to use payment link? You want to be anonymous? Payment link, email media at bishopbloomer.com. 50 people are sowing the seed of 14. $14. 50 people are sowing the seed of $14 in the name of Jesus. If all you got is $14, it, it cannot be a need meter. It's got to be a seed to grow a harvest. Yeah, you give seed to the sower to sow so you can get seed and eat while you're doing it in the name of Jesus. Closings for us today in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do my closing statement and then leave you all. I'm going to do something my husband does. When my husband hears something really, really powerful, and he thinks more needs to be to it. He has something that he says. Um, he'll get up and tell the people this. Um, and because this lesson was so powerful today, and it's really going to be something that will turn the leaders and get them going in the direction in which they're supposed to. And I don't know when Bishop is going to bring more of it back, but this is what my husband says, and I believe it. And he says this, to be continued. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave that at that because it's you so, so much right. in here that it's so much more so that every leader will complete their assignment because Jezebel has no right. You know, I say this as you're leaving. I want to thank uh, God for my staff and for Vanita. Uh, these people make me look really, really good. And um, the, 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 I get up two, three o'clock in the morning. And when she wakes up, I don't know what time she wakes up, there's already a text that's longer than the arm to try to wish, and I don't spell that well. And all of this, these people work very, very hard to make sure that the people of God get the proper message and people are following us with trend settings. And I remember when Warfare College started, it was about maybe in our third month or so, the Lord gave you a word, gave you a prophecy, he said, Bishop, stay focused, keep on doing what you're doing. This is gonna grow. I'm telling you, we're in that air and under that anointing and I just thank God for it. I'm speaking to everyone who is watching today and I want you to part with that seed of 14, that 14, those two sevens, put them together and do what you have to do. There's seven of you that need to do 140, seven of you that need to do uh, 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 200. Uh, there's one person who is battling and I keep on seeing you're battling with that 1537. It is no longer yours. It belongs to God. And when you give it to God, he's going to mushroom it in your life. It is coming in the name of Jesus. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Get your seed in the ground. Get your seed in the ground. Get it in the ground. Be a sower. Do what the Lord spoke to me, spoke to Overseer King, spoke to Apostle Shirley Brown. He said he wants us sowing all the time. And as we honor him and obey him in that area, he causes things to expand in our life. This is that day in the name of Jesus. Loose it now in Jesus' name. Overseer, final words for the day. Well, my final words, I'm just going to repeat the Apostle Paul's prayer. The eyes of your understanding will be enlightened that you might know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the inheritance in the saints. So a lot of people's eyes need to be open to what the enemy is trying to do and how the enemy is trying to destroy, to deceive them. But if they listen to the word, the word will open up their eyes and their ears of understanding. Amen. While I was teaching, and I, I have, I'm in the midst of a series, but while I was teaching today, the Lord impressed it upon my heart very, very heavily to do this teaching at our church. Mm -hmm. uh, at our church, of course, we're going to add to it and put stuff in it that I couldn't put in it because we didn't have the time to do it. So, Vanita, please don't lose any of these slides or anything like that. Have it ready. We might have to pull a message out of the in sync, drop this in there, and then go back to the other, other message. But I am convinced today, in the name of Jesus, that this drifting, wandering spirit that is on the saints must stop. And I'm going to be texting some people that I know to tell them you are under a satanic illusion. Get your focus back. And get your behind in the position, in the place. You don't have to come to our church, but be in somebody's church. 
Stop this. Your children's destiny, your children's destiny relies on this. Get this thing back together. Get it back together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Tomorrow uh, is Warfare Ecology over, uh, um, overflow. I, when I say overflow now, it kind of worries me a little bit. But overflow Friday is tomorrow. And we're going to have a pan so what the overflow falls into it. But anyway, overflow Friday is tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you. And in the next few weeks, there's going to be a program shifting in our programs and our guests so you'll see people who was once on one day on another day and it's going to bless you it is coming to you thank you so much for your support at, uh, of warfare ecology every single day now 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 i want you to get that 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 seed your best seed in your hand why am i wrestling with you with this because that spirit of jezebel that spirit of jezebel is a distracting spirit and the spirit of Jezebel does not want you to sow into your future, but your future is right now. Your future is right now. Get the seed and release it in Jesus' name. Final time for the day. Cynthia, how did you uh, like the service today? Bishop, it was, it was great. Um, I, you know, it had me thinking about... Um, who were some of the other people in the Bible who were under that Jezebel spirit and um, how God dealt with them and, you know, in, in relation to people in authority. And one of the persons that I thought about was Miriam um, in regards to Moses and how God dealt with her in that situation. And uh, so it's a very serious thing for sure. Definitely do not want to be manipulated by be that Jezebel spirit or be manipulated by it. Sure don't. You want to walk in the freedom and the whole in, in the freedom of the Holy Spirit and that you're in on God's side and uh, you're on the right side of the battle. And I, I, I'm, I'm frightened because the Jezebel spirit, I'm going to teach this at the church, but the Jezebel spirit is not only in the uh, in the church. It's in politics. It's in it's in it's in, it's in fashion. It's in education. It's in media, it's in entertainment, it's in art, it's everywhere. And we must be aware of it. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Warfare Ecology, on Warfare Ecology. And I pray that those of you that watch the program after would get the same impact and the same anointing would rest on your life. The paint on my door is blood. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. That's the covenant of protection. The instructions are. Come, my people, go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21 in the Message Bible. Go home, shut yourselves in, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed, and worship God. Bishop George Bloom.